Stories about ghosts, poltergeists, apparitions, and things that go bump in the night are as old as time itself. But capturing definitive proof of their existence has proved elusive until now. Modern technology from dash cams to mobile phones and CCTV surveillance means that investigators and witnesses are able to capture what they believe is genuine evidence of paranormal activity. Oh, it's breaking up! Those are aliens! We've enlisted a panel of experts to analyze some of the most exciting reports from across the globe. No way! Don't see how anybody could explain that any other way than paranormal. That is really bizarre. Have we finally been able to prove the impossible? This is Paranormal Captured. Tonight, we investigate an encounter with a poltergeist. Oh, my torch has just gone off. A medieval spirit manifests in a bar. I was gobsmacked when I saw that. And we have reports of apparitions in Asia. It doesn't look set up to me. What it is, is another question. To sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behavior. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work. And some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. I am on the lookout for undeniable proof. All hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. Oh, gosh. Why am I worried? <laughs> Filming a full-bodied apparition is considered to be the pinnacle of ghost hunting. And our first sighting comes from San Carlos City in the Philippines in 2018. The footage was captured by cameras at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Fearful locals have come to believe the apparition is male and the spirit of someone with a grudge. When you look at the traffic and you look at the gate of the person or entity walking, it never loses its gate, it's always got the same steps going across, that, that I'd put up there. <laughs> I would, that bit of evidence, um, as in one of the unexplains. Reports of paranormal activity have been documented across the globe, but some locations are more notorious than others. One such place is Ye Old King's Head Pub in Chester, England, whose reputation as a haunted hotspot dates back centuries. So this is the main corridor of the hotel. This is the first place I ever experienced anything paranormal. This particular night I stayed in room two. When I was getting into bed that night, there was a blatant knock on the door. I opened the door, nobody here at all. Once I come onto the corridor, it didn't feel quite right. Felt like a different type of energy, so I grabbed my camera phone and I stood at the end of the corridor taking photographs. I came up with an image that, for me, and a lot of people, looks like a little girl standing there. That's when I started finding out the stories about the two children that was run around the corridors looking for the mother at night time. It could be light reflecting off something in a certain way. However, I mean, it is the height of a child and it does kind of look like a slight figure. The brain will scramble for meaning if there is something there that looks like a shape. So there is already a heightened awareness of a reality about it. And I think when you add a historical element to it, that somehow gives it credibility. To put your finger on it and say it's a little girl, um, I personally wouldn't do that, but he caught something. He's got something there. One of the things as an investigator, what you should be doing is taking 
three photographs in a row, which are your control photos. If you have an anomaly in one photograph and not in the other two, then yes, that could potentially be something. It's got to have more photos to, to be a, a definite yes, that's paranormal. It certainly is interesting, though. It's impossible to know when paranormal activity will occur, so most experiences are never caught on camera. But with CCTV now installed across towns and cities all over the world, cameras are recording 24 hours, seven days a week, increasing the chances dramatically. In Barnsley in the UK, antique dealer Daniel has begun to suspect other forces might be at work in his shop after a series of unexplained incidents have been captured on his in-store CCTV. Before we even opened to the public, things started to happen. I don't believe in ghosts, so it, I never put it down to like anything spooky. But then one thing led to another and it's sort of grown and grown, like things happening like month after month. The first recorded incident took everyone by surprise. When we first had CCTV fitted, the electrician, he phoned me up, he says, I've just been rewiring. He says, I've gone out for some more materials. He says, I've locked the shop up. There were no one else in. I've come back in, opened up. He says, there's glass everywhere. So he rewound the CCTV and it shows the cabinet door was already open and then just exploded. It didn't just sort of break in half and fall to the floor. It literally shattered and glass went everywhere. While the footage was captured in 2014, our experts have never seen these clips before. Is that the glass? Wow. But to actually create that would take a lot of kinetic energy. I would like to think that was um, poltergeist activity. There didn't seem to be anything that could cause that to happen. And even if there was a slight crack in the glass or anything, there wasn't anything around, the door didn't move. If there's not a massive shift in temperature, there should be no explanation for why that, that glass is suddenly shattering like that. I don't see how anybody could explain that any other way than paranormal. But this was the first of many unexplained events captured in the shop. It was a big object as well. It is actually happening while people are in the shop as well. You know, poltergeists, meaning noisy ghosts, are renowned for moving things around. And there seems to be a lot of things moving in this place, which, I mean, could be poltergeist activity. Antique dealer Andy, who trades from the shop, has also experienced unusual activity. I've had a lot of occasion where mirrors and pictures have come off walls and doors have opened by the cells. I'd say I'm a sceptic, but if I were quite honest, I'm coming round a bit because there's just too many things to explain that we can't explain away in this shop. I've never felt fear, but I've felt uneasy, especially when I've been walking around and I'm on my own and, and like all hairs on the back of your neck stand on end and on your arms and you get like that cold shivering feeling so and it does happen quite a lot but there is a lot of people that said they felt like somebody's tapped them on the back and tapped them on the head and things like that and that happens on a regular basis customers have also witnessed things they can't explain i came in here with my son and we stood here my son likes gothic things and he especially likes skulls we saw this picture here and there's a great big skull on it he said, Dad, I like that, I really like it. I said, what do you want to buy it? He said, I'm not quite sure. And he stood looking at it. And the picture then proceeded to come along the edge here and then went straight down and landed at his feet. I just couldn't believe it. If we come in on the morning and there's, say, a picture on the floor, I'll, if I get the chance, I'll rewind the CCTV and see if it's on camera. Nine times out of ten, it is on camera. Bit bizarre. It's, people say it's like air pressure, but there's a lot of lighter things than pictures which you would see moving in the same area, and that there's no movement on anything else. I still always look for a logical answer, but a lot of these things, there is no logical answer. 
So you just can't explain them. They're, they are unexplained. With events occurring in the shop almost every day, could one possible explanation for this activity be the paranormal? I don't believe that it's impossible, but for me, it's a question of weights of evidence, right? There's a lot of extra steps between CCTV footage of an object falling from a shelf and therefore there's some sort of like supernatural entity. This comes down to a question of the interpretation where if you really want there to be a ghost or a poltergeist there, then you could use those falling objects as evidence. As the current evidence is compelling but inconclusive, we've sent paranormal investigator Jane Harris to the shop to see if she can capture further proof for our experts to analyze. The subject of the paranormal will always be controversial. Hundreds of years ago, people took evidence from the fact that they would use a spirit board and they would get messages through, or they would get tables moving, knocks and sounds, and that was enough. But today, we're constantly turning more towards science, which, although a good thing, it moves the bar, because what people accept as evidence of the paranormal, it's very subjective, it's very personal, but it's constantly moving and evolving and changing. I think we're possibly moving closer to understanding a certain point, a certain degree of it, but I think ultimately it's the unexplained for a reason. And there are people who think that actually we aren't supposed to know everything, we aren't supposed to understand everything. Daniel. Hiya. Hi. I'm Jane Harris, Paranormal Investigator. Oh, nice to meet you. Do you mind if I have a quick look around on my own? No, help yourself. When looking at the CCTV footage, any one of those clips could potentially be explained by something natural, so vibrations or, or anything at all. But when you add them all together, and also customers and staff have experienced things in there, there are three areas to look at, really, when it comes to explaining what's happening. Either activity to do with the land, activity to do with the building, or any one of the array of objects that are in that place. Poltergeists usually move and manipulate objects, and that's certainly what we're dealing with at the Antique Centre. With the shop on lockdown, Jane and Daniel prepare for a long night ghost hunting. Paranormal events are defined as those that are beyond normal experience or scientific explanation. But as the 21st century unfolds, new technology means events that used to be dismissed as ghost stories are now captured on camera. In 2017 in Brazil, two security guards patrolling the grounds of a care center were disturbed by a loud noise. They decided to investigate and used a mobile phone to film their chilling discovery. As if you would go down there. I'm an investigator. I would be panicked walking up to that. My camera would be a bit shaky. People will always have this draw to all things strange and spooky and scary. And when it comes to your own fears, I mean, I was terrified of the dark for a really long time. And which, as an investigator, is not ideal. <laughs> not gonna lie. That looked compelling, but I'd have to revisit that several times and go, what was really at play there? When paranormal activity occurs, it can strike fear into those experiencing it. 
But for some, seeing a ghostly apparition is the start of a lifelong obsession. At Ye Old King's Head in the UK, landlord Harry has captured an intriguing light anomaly on camera. Eager to get more evidence, he invited paranormal investigator Paul Rowland in to try to capture more proof. My background has been engineering and electrical engineering, and then I moved into uh, CCTV alarms and security and recording. So that gave me a background into the knowledge of how cameras work. I started using a conventional car dash cam. Whatever had caused the camera to trigger, they would capture about five seconds of it, the actual event, and then five seconds afterwards, and then automatically stop. It's a nice little camera setup. We've got an everyday device here, and this guy's gone dash cam, ghost hunting, put the two together. So I started using this device in this room. Activate it, we walk out the room, leave it to do its own thing. After a night of recording in an empty room, Paul reviewed his footage. I'd noticed there was one clip that was very, very short, and that's extremely unusual. So when I looked into it closely, I realised it had actually captured something very, very unusual. It's a really quick clip, but you do see a cloaked figure walking past the camera and the camera distorts once you walk past as well. It moved very, very fast, far faster than we would as normal walking pace. There was no living people in the room here. The camera was pointing at the doorway, so it would have picked up any movement towards it by a living person. And the shake, to me, indicated it had been turned off by contact somehow. I was gobsmacked when I saw that. You could actually see something there, and then the camera go. You can clearly see the light anomaly come towards the camera, but then as it moves off camera before the camera actually moves, you see the shape. There could always be somebody on the other side of the camera moving it slightly. So I'm a little bit on the fence on that one. I would say that's genuine because the fact that it moves the camera, unless a massive lorry has suddenly gone past, but you would have constantly seen the camera shaking in previous footage as well. He's really thought this out and to have that, I mean, he seems very, very genuine to me. This is like a lone warrior out on a mission. And I like that, I like that. If you're listening, you can join my team. <laughs> in Barnsley in the UK, paranormal investigator Jane Harris believes an antique centre in the north of England might be experiencing poltergeist activity. Poltergeists are a bit stronger than normal spirits, ghosts. They have the ability to draw energy and to use that energy either to communicate or to make people aware that they're there or to frighten them. And they do this usually by moving objects. Jane has brought along paranormal detection equipment that she hopes will entice the spirit or spirits to communicate. I'm loaded up with as much equipment as possible. Ideally, we'd like to capture more evidence than just visual. I'd like some voices, I'd like some taps and some sounds, and basically anything else we can use to just verify what's happening. But before she begins, something breaks. Guys, something potentially a bit strange has just happened. Come and have a look at this. So, my lantern has broken there and fallen there. I use that all the time, I know right, it's yeah, heat proof. Yeah. Your spirits broke my lantern. It's a bit strange. Not convinced it's paranormal. It might be on CCTV. Well, let's check that yeah, out, sure, shall yeah, we? Yeah. Shall we see if we've got yeah. something? I know they've had broken glass with the cabinet. So you would put two and two together and think, OK, this is a spirit that likes to break glass. Right, yeah, we'll be, oh, yeah. be on this one. Right, so... Something in this shop likes to smash glass. So, camera two. I'll just rewind it a touch. So, th That's there you are, lighting it. it. Yeah, yeah. If you can just keep an eye on it while I fast forward. Check the torch here. That, that's only there. It is, it wasn't lit for long, was it? That is a really short space of time, really, isn't yeah. it? So even if it wasn't heat-resistant glass, 
Well, in that if it time, is a candle holder, it should be like heat resistant yeah. fashion. How strange. Well, let's bear in mind that tonight glass might get broken. Yeah, right. Well, Again. Right. They went back and they reviewed the CCTV and made sure that they knew exactly when it happened with nobody around at the time. So to me, that validates it. And I think that's very important to, to validate. Jane and Daniel were now bed in for the night, hoping that if there is something else in the shop with them, it will attempt to make itself known. But before the investigation begins, more strange incidents occur. Oh. Is that OK, or...? No, my torch has just gone off. <laughs> Shall I turn back on? What happened? I put that down, switched on, right. yeah. to, to just beam across there. And as you turned, whichever lights you turned off, yeah, yeah. that went off as well. So... Oh, yeah. yeah, well, let's... Uh... No, it's working, so let's try So you've here. actually got to physically push it on. There's a button, yeah, there's a button on the back. Things already happening when we're not right. around. Yeah, yeah. Things that we don't want to happen, things that are actually inconvenient to us. And that, yeah. I suppose, again, is typical of a poltergeist. So right. we haven't had anything strong yet, no. but possibly, you know, you never know. The timing of it when it actually goes out, when the other light goes out, that is quite compelling, um, I must say, you know. Um, so I would not put that down to faulty batteries. I'd put that down to something obviously unexplained. It kind of seems to sort of suck the energy from it and then for a brief second, so it'll dim or it'll go off, which is another reason why people use torches and things as a tool to communicate. As Jane continues to set up her equipment, she encounters yet another setback. When I switch to night mode, right, so you can see this, I'm not going crazy. So it's got full battery, been charged. So now I'm going to go to night vision, low battery, and it goes off. That's interesting. That's another piece of equipment that's not been behaving itself. That happens a lot. Uh, usually means there's going to be some activity. You'll go with fresh batteries, you check them right before you start, and then something like that happens. You replace the batteries, they drain again. It can be a nightmare. A lot of the times when you are speaking of the spirit that potentially haunts the location, you know, when you're talking about them, it's almost as though they want to be a part of the conversation. So you do find that you will have increased activity. Jane has only just begun to look for tangible evidence of a poltergeist. But could a spirit already be making its presence known? I've got the sense that we're being watched since mm. coming in. And I get the distinct feeling that someone doesn't want me here. When witnessing paranormal activity for the first time, most people simply can't believe their eyes. But since phones became mobile, and cameras are something we carry with us every day, filming an event as proof is now possible. So in the UK in 2015, when two friends were driving home from work and they saw something they couldn't explain, they decided to double back and get on camera the vision that caught their eye. Where was he? Just down here. Junction. He's there. Yeah, he's there he is. What was that? What was that? Was that a figure? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what was it? You definitely saw a figure uh, on the side of the road, but I mean, I couldn't make it out properly, but it was, I don't know. That's a weird one, that. I must have missed it. Did I, what? It taps into a very nice narrative. It's the build up to it. We're along the road for a bit and then figure and then cut. That's a very classic ghost story trope. You don't know if that's an actual person or, or apparition. It goes by so quickly. It's just weird. First of all, what would somebody be doing out in the dark in what looks like a secluded kind of location there? Paranormal? Mm, maybe not. Creepy? Definitely. <laughs> 
paranormal world is defined simply as unexplained phenomena experienced by others. And capturing evidence is a global preoccupation that continues to grow with advancements in modern technology. In the UK, at Ye Old King's Head in Chester, Landlord Harry and paranormal investigator Paul have captured what they believe is proof. My technology has changed over the years. I develop lighting systems that involve blue and ultraviolet light because they're at a higher energy end of the colour spectrum. The next layer of technology I added in was a pulse modulation. So as the light is actually vibrating as it's leaving the light source, and if it hits a target that it can resonate from, this is how I've captured the pictures of ghosts that I've got so far. During one investigation in the 17th century pub, Paul managed to capture some of his strongest evidence to date. We were sat in the back function room. I stood up and started taking photos. One photo was the beginning of the formation of the soldier. We've got a living person in the same photo as a spirit. That's quite important. And then the next photo was the black torso, which was hovering off the ground. There was no sign of head, limbs. You could see completely underneath it. He phoned me ecstatic this day. He goes, I've caught something, Harry. You need to see it. And when I saw it, to think that I'd actually seen that with my own eyes as well. There is an actual person stood in the same frame. So you can see how solid they are, and yet you can see through this apparition. I don't have an explanation for that. I don't think that could be the way light's reflecting, because that is quite a full figure. To see that standing next to him in the same shot, uh, is very compelling. The black shadow? Wow. We have customers that come in here and they tell me that all oh, the paranormal is a load of rubbish. The photo evidence reassured what I'd seen. I'm not going crazy, I did see something. And maybe the customers who are skeptics might believe a little bit more now. When you're looking to prove something, you can interpret kind of ambiguous information, say a bit of motion blur. People might see a face there in what's effectively noise. Your own kind of cognitive interpretations are coloring the sensory information that you're receiving. If I was there and I knew that no one was in that room and I'd seen that, yeah, I I'd be over the moon with this kind of evidence. The so Yole King's Head, absolutely awesome location. And there is some serious, paranormal activity going on there that cannot be debunked. Now, I know the apparition that walks past the camera, that's awesome. The pictures, oh my word. I can't explain the stuff I've seen and the stuff I've experienced. I don't think anyone will ever get the real answer why there is things that reside in the building that you can't explain. In the north of England, Jane Harris is trying to determine if the unusual activity that's been plaguing an antique centre is paranormal. After a few technical hitches, Jane finally starts the investigation with shop owner Daniel. Sat in separate rooms in the dark, they are unable to hear or see each other. Communication is through walkie-talkies only. Can you hear me OK, Daniel? Yeah, fine. OK, what I'd like you to do is just ask spirits if they're here to affect me. So I'm going to sit now um, in darkness. If anything happens, I'll call you and we'll sort of try to confirm to each other whether you did actually ask for anything to happen. It can be touching me or moving something in the room, making a sound, just general kind of things, but hopefully they might like to approach me on my own in the dark. OK, tell me when to start. OK, ready when you are. If there's anything or anyone here, can you make anything move where Jane is in the back room? Can you touch the doll? Can you tap Jane on the shoulder? Did you just ask for anything to 
come near me or by the pram or move around the pram or come to that side of me at all? Yeah, I asked it if it could move the doll or if it could touch you on the shoulder like it touched the customer last week. OK, that's, in that's interesting. I've just had... Um, it felt like a breeze, like something on my right-hand side, um, which is right next to the pram. I felt like someone was almost like leaning over the pram. That's weird. Yeah. OK, carry on. Tap on Jane's shoulder. Tap on her head. Daniel, there's not anything going on in the room, but I keep feeling quite cold on one side or the other, and I'm sure I felt a bit like something touched my hair not too long ago. Does that make sense to you, or is that completely different to what you've been asking? No, I actually told it to tap you on, on the shoulder or, or even tap you on your head. Daniel, you've not asked anything to do with the temperature in the room, have you? Because it's just gone down from 50 to 46, 4 degrees. Oh, instantly, I watched it happen. Oh, that's very interesting. A sudden, sharp 4 degree drop. OK, very, very interesting. Usually, if there's a drop in temperature, that means that there's likely something nearby. She seems to feel the difference in the temperature, and she feels something next to her. So when a spirit is trying to manifest itself, it will draw the energy from the surrounding area. So the atmosphere automatically, when they draw that energy, becomes quite cold. So it is a known thing that we look for as investigators. I've had this. Uh, actually happen um, where you, you, you get a sudden temperature drop of like five degrees. You know, I've done Ouija, for instance, and trying to make contact, and all of a sudden, someone came on the board. I said, can you reveal yourself? And it literally went S-A-T-A-N. And I was like, sorry, I said, <laughs> are you telling me you're Satan? And as I said that, the temperature plummeted. Jane and Daniel have been investigating in the antique centre for three hours. They've already encountered things they can't explain. Hopefully, this is just a taste of what's to come. While paranormal investigators may have specialist cameras to help them capture activity, the rest of us have to rely on what we have in our pocket. In Mexico in 2018, Francisco Hernandez was finishing his shift when he heard a mysterious noise. As per the airline's protocol, he went to investigate and decided to record his findings. There's a number of rational explanations behind what's going on there. The simplest one is, is the shadow, with it's trick of light coming off his, his camera. No, mum. <clears throat> wow. Evolutionarily speaking, it's very good to have the ability to kind of fill in the gaps, especially when you're getting sparse informational inputs. You should make some assumptions about what is happening rather than just kind of throw up your hands and say, oh, can't possibly know this. But while that is usually a great and effective way of handling your environment, sometimes it can glitch. One of the main reasons I do investigating is for the adrenaline rush of it. Because when something happens, I mean, your flight or fight mode kicks in. You know, maybe you think you see a shadow figure walk past or whatever, and your brain kind of scrambles to find a logical explanation. And when it can't, I mean, that, it's an adrenaline rush. Whilst certain locations are known to attract paranormal activity, it's also believed that spirits can be drawn to people and objects. In Hinckley in the UK, Museum curator Neil collects haunted artefacts and wanting to advance knowledge in the field, he set up a research centre that is open to the public and investigators. 
I wanted other people to join in with my research into haunted objects. I think the paranormal works on frequencies and different levels, so everyone picks up on different things. I don't claim that every item in the center is haunted as such. Not everything's got a spirit attached to them, but they've all got energy from previous owners. I didn't want a museum where things would be behind glass. So people can come in, they can sit in the wheelchair, they can sit in the rocking chair, or they can hold items. Neil regularly opens his doors to teams undertaking investigations. One particular room in the museum seems to attract more activity than others. At the back of the centre, we've got a room which is very atmospheric, we call the science room. We focus on building the energy up in that room. In here, the table seems to be a focal point for spirits. The table has actually moved on its own a few times, and also when there's been members of the general public here. Um, so when a team came in, we asked them to focus some of the time on the table to see if they can actually catch it moving. They did a live feed from the center. They started off in the main room, and then they did the, a session in the sounds room. They were calling out for spirit activity. Uh, they all lifted their hands off the table. <gasps> Holy oh, oh, help! I actually watched this live. When it happened, my first thing was, look under the table. I want to see where everyone's feet are. Did somebody kick the table? Did someone push it? Did someone move it in any way? However, their reaction when that happened, you can't fake that. It was such a genuine shock. It's exciting, your adrenaline starts pumping. That's what you're after. Table clearly moves a good couple of inches. If things are fakes or someone's actually pushed the table, the reactions wouldn't be the same. The table does clearly move on the camera, but you don't really see the base of the table because we don't really have the angle to see if someone's, say, either deliberately or accidentally got their foot on the base of that table. You kind of see the camera pan straight down towards everyone's feet, and it doesn't look like anyone pushed it. What I would have done, I would have had a locked off camera under that table because I would want to have seen everything before I even attempted that experiment. The way that it moves, it doesn't look like someone's just kind of kicked it. It kind of slides across, which is really interesting. I can only imagine that table weighs a uh, couple of hundred pound to get that to move would take a hell of a lot of energy uh, or at least two or three spirits involved <laughs> to pick that up. I've never been a fan of seances or table tipping until I experienced table tipping that like I've never experienced before. I was the last one on the table. The table was rocking and moving and I lifted my hands off of it and it still moved into the corner. So now I'm a little bit of a believer. In the antique center, paranormal investigator Jane Harris and shop owner Daniel are trying to determine if a poltergeist is present. Earlier in the evening, Jane had left out various types of equipment. This is an ovulus. And what this does, basically this manipulates the airwave so it will pick up on words. Yeah. If spirits are trying to communicate with us, it will almost act as a receiver. Right. And it will receive the information and we will hear the word and also see the word come up on there. Suddenly, four hours into the investigation, the ovulus springs into action. Not to alarm anyone, but it just said kill three times as I walked down there. If an ovulus says the same word more than once, it is likely something using the, the energy to, to form a word. I do think that if there are spirits there, they do have a sense of humor as well. So they will try and say things to scare you. I have seen the ovulus work in incredible ways before, but I've also experienced the ovulus coming out with complete garbage, to be honest, stuff that just doesn't make sense. You are looking for intelligent answers at the time that you are calling out. Can you speak to me again? Try to say, try to say something. Here. Is that here? 
try to say something. Can you say your name? Can you say your name? Is there more than one person here? It seems like whenever we try to directly communicate, nothing wants to. As the investigation draws to a close, Jane decides to introduce a new bit of kit, the spirit box. Now that's quite strange. Mm. So we've just settled down to have a bit of a last ditch attempt at some communication. And this is going off and on again. Turn this off and we'll see if we can hear anything actually in the shop. Try to make an obvious, clear sound now. They say that spirits don't have much energy and they have to try and use ours and draw on that. Um, we've had lots of technical problems this evening and batteries go in and all sorts, so that could potentially be an explanation for that. But they reach a point where their energy's gone and that's it, yeah. and you can't have any more communication or anything at all. In the few hours that I've been here, enough has happened for me to be pretty sure, actually, that something's going on here paranormally. Once the light's out, I think your mind can play tricks on you. So the slightest touch, you think, did something touch me. The amount of things that have happened in just our shop, I am slightly getting to be a, a bit of a believer. With the investigation over, it's time to analyse the findings. There's obviously something going on there that's not normal. That doesn't mean to say it's haunted, but it's not normal. So it's got full battery, no battery, and it goes off. The sudden temperature drop was, was quite a big thing. So it's just gone down from 50 to 46, four degrees. Instantly, I watched it happen. When you look at all the activity that they're experiencing in the shop and all the things moving about and that, do I think that there's possibly something paranormal there? Yes. There are certain elements of it that I would say are unexplainable. I personally wouldn't label it haunted because once you label a location haunted, then everyone gets into the mindset that you're dealing with a paranormal event every time something goes wrong. <laughs> you know, the toilet flushes on its own, it's like, it's the ghost. Would I say it's haunted? The simple answer is I don't know. But as a paranormal investigator, would it interest me? Yeah, most definitely. I really love to go there and investigate. It's very intriguing. I'm still very open to the idea that Barnsley Antique Centre is haunted purely because in a short space of time, I experienced a few things which I couldn't explain. I don't necessarily think it's a poltergeist, but I do think there is some activity in that building, definitely. And I think we haven't seen the last of footage from that center. Tonight, we search for spirits in a haunted party shop. To get this very clear response was just mind blowing. An apparently evil entity terrorises a home. When he is here, he likes to let you know he's here. And we investigate an unusual creature spotted in a Canadian forest. This is the stuff that horror movies are made out of. To sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behaviour. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work and some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. I am on the lookout for undeniable proof. All hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. Oh gosh, why am I worried? <laughs> Reports of paranormal incidents have been documented across every continent on the planet, with occurrences happening daily. 
In San Carlos City, in 2018, residents living near a grocery store began to be concerned by sightings of an unusual entity in the area. Store owner, Mr. Forto, was compelled to check his CCTV. The footage he stumbled across left him baffled and scared. Oh, there's a shadow figure. Cool. That's interesting. <laughs> What's interesting, though, is the way it moves across camera. I'd want to see that from many different angles, not just one. It doesn't really look like a smudge on the lens situation because it was moving around quite weirdly. I think that it's uh, a shadow of someone. And it's got this really misty sort of outline to it. It's actually rare that you can get full manifestations. If this was a common thing, then it'd be happening all the time, wouldn't it? Paranormal activity can occur at any time and in any location, and can often be terrifying for those who experience it. In Leicester, in the UK, mother of three, Gaynor, knows firsthand how frightening the paranormal can be. And it all began 39 years ago, when she first moved into her home. I didn't know any history about the house. Uh, to me, it was just, you know, a home to move in. That worked, really. I hadn't been round to look at the house. I just got the keys off the council and started moving straight in. Then I brought my dog in. In this corner, my dog come running in and he'll growling and snoring. I knew the way the dog were acting, there was some here. So I looked up in the corner and said, could you leave, please? I didn't really feel much at the time because I was too busy trying to move in, about five months pregnant at the time. It was sort of in the back of my mind thinking, oh, I've got some tea. As Gaynor and her animals became settled in the house, activity began to escalate. Over the years, little things were moving and coming back, or it'd move and then disappear for a few days and then come back. And as my sons were getting older, the oldest one was starting to see black shadows upstairs on the landing. There were a cold spot on the stairs. It was freezing cold. Whereas if you stood up the one be below or the one above, which was normal, but it stood on that middle one, it was absolutely freezing. With something unexplainable happening in the house, could Gaynor's dogs have seen whatever was responsible? Dogs will hear frequencies much lower than the human ear can hear. Are they picking up on the presence of the spirit in the house? I think they could absolutely do that. Their sense of smell, their sense of sight is a lot better than ours. And I do believe that they can sense the paranormal. I do think it's reasonable to say that maybe the dog was sensing something that we couldn't sense. The question of what that is and is that supernatural is I think an entirely separate question. Soon, however, the activity began to escalate. It felt like something, or someone, wanted to be noticed. The fire alarm started going off upstairs in one of the bedrooms. I thought, what the hell's that at the time? So uh, I ran upstairs and the um, curtains were on fire in the bedroom. So we just ripped them down and put them out. I had a poof, eh? That went on fire. The furniture, it'd be on fire and there'd be round holes in your settee light. And then that's when I started placing buckets of water around the house. Right, combustion. I would love to know when this started. Has this always happened in the house? Have previous tenants ever experienced anything like this in the past? Her belief is so strong that she's absolutely convinced that there is definitely some kind of paranormal activity and therefore in order to combat that she has buckets of water instead of looking at physical explanations for what it could be instead. For things to be physically set alight in her house is really an interesting case. What's interesting though is it's the places that the fires are happening. 
I don't have a rational explanation for that. It's really interesting though, and also one of the traits of a poltergeist is being able to set things on fire. That's life-threatening. That is life-threatening. Whether you're a believer or a skeptic, the tradition of telling ghost stories is something that is passed down from generation to generation. But with some locations, it's almost impossible to distinguish between folklore and fact. In Mould, North Wales, the haunting of a 17th century building has become ingrained in the town's history. After seven years, former skeptic and shop owner Katie is convinced she's experienced paranormal activity. I started believing when I first took off the shop. I'd locked the shop floor door and me and my mum were in the cellar. We were standing at the bottom of the steps and I was telling the story of Sarah the ghost. I've always known about the history of Sarah, the covered in the schools around Mould and the previous owner, she told us a few stories. And when I was telling the story, we heard steps above us. My mum heard it as well and she's quite sceptical. She says, oh, there's somebody in the shop. So I ran up thinking it was a customer, but the door was still locked and there was nobody there. Since I moved into the shop, I've had so many unexplainable encounters. One notable feature of the shop is a well in the cellar, which has since been filled with concrete. And according to unsubstantiated reports, 50 years ago, the well revealed a gruesome secret. Allegedly in the 1960s, they found the bones of Sarah. Well, they found the bones of a girl in the well. So she went in with the preconception that there was a ghost called Sarah. Anything that's steeped in history, the ghost stories come with that package. On saying that, I am not ruling out any paranormal activity in that location because as living beings, we have this energy that I just don't believe just ends and that's the end of your life, it's over. Shop worker Lauren has also experienced activity. One day, when she was feeling unwell, she closed the shop and had an unusual encounter. I sat on the stairs and I was crying, and all of a sudden, I felt this coldness all on this side of my body. Um, instead of feeling scared, I felt comforted, and I could assume that it could have been Sarah just trying to make me feel better by giving me a hug, I don't know, and it, that's what it could have been. She definitely had an experience, and you can't take that away from her. It could have been Sarah, it could have been somebody else trying to comfort her as well. It could be that it is more of a mental thing. It could be that you want somebody in that moment to comfort you and you don't want to feel alone. I myself have had similar experiences out on location where I've had something brush my face and I've felt something, you know, touch my shoulder and so it's unexplainable. So only she would actually really, truly, personally know what she went through. Seven years since moving in, Katie has decided to move on. After selling off the party shop stock, she decided to document her last days in the historic building. We cleared out the attic. The next day, I thought, oh, I'm going to go up in the attic and just get a film, one last film of it, uh, just to take away. Um, and when I was filming, I saw little things of light shooting across the screen. I was quite surprised, really, because I've gone in the attic, I've filmed before, and I've never captured anything like that before. I personally am not a believer in orbs. I'm a believer in light anomalies. It's something that changes shape. It's something that can grow in size, move in different ways, suddenly come across the screen, then move into a different direction, but not an orb or a ball of light. I know there's a, a lot of stigma attached with these orb sightings. I say that 
very carefully because I have actually myself on video, I said, can you please show yourself and can you please come across from the right hand side down to my left side? And this all just came in like this, straight across down to my left side. So I said, do that again, but this time come from that side, to, from my left side to my right side. And the orb comes in from the left, straight across through to the right. If that's intelligent um, dust, <laughs> uh, you know, or is it actually uh, some physical entity using light energy? I've had pictures that I would swear was something other than dust, and I've had a seasoned investigator say, eh, nope, it's dust, but I swear it's not. Who's to say it is? It's really, really hard to tell. With the shop up for sale, Katie is more determined than ever to capture definitive proof. It's important to get some evidence of these spirits. Um, uh, one for me, um, just to show that I'm not just the mad lady in the party shop. Also, just to keep the legacy alive, really, keep the history alive of the building, because the people of Mould are so interested in it. With only days to spare before Katie moves out, we've sent paranormal investigator Lee Roberts to the party shop to investigate one last time. Hello. Hiya. I'm Lee. Oh, hi, I'm Katie. Do you want to show me around so you have a look? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's get started. It's just this way. Katie is hoping Lee and his equipment will be able to interact with the ghost of the young girl she has experienced. Sarah used to be a lot more active when she got disturbed. You should get some good activity tonight because everything's changing, really, and she doesn't like change. A paranormal event might only be seen in the blink of an eye or in the peripheries of your vision, leading a potential witness to dismiss the activity without a second thought. But if you happen to hit record on your camera at the right time, that moment is captured forever. In 2014, in an underground train station in London, England, a passenger suddenly noticed movement in the tunnel. Believing it to be a bird, they began filming on their mobile phone. Upon reviewing the footage, though, something more sinister can be seen. Naughty words. Yeah, that's one of the more interesting clips I've seen. The skeptic within me says that's a person. It can be very eerie down there, definitely. Could there just be a trick of light? I don't have the full picture, I just have a picture. So if I am a believer, I will get one picture and I will get one narrative and I will go with one set of beliefs. If I'm a skeptic, I'll get another picture and want to investigate it further, revisit it and test it. While it's clear that what was seen was not a bird, could this shadowy figure be an echo from the past? I would hope there was a rational explanation for that down in the tube tunnels. It is interesting footage though, definitely, and it'd be one that I'd be interested in investigating, definitely. While some people might not want to accept the existence of the paranormal, others have no choice but to confront this reality. In Leicester, in the UK, animal lover Gaynor believes her house is plagued by paranormal activity and what had started as harmless incidents soon escalated into life-threatening episodes. But the fires weren't the only troubling development in the house. This is our bedroom. As soon as we get into bed and just about to fall asleep, it starts hitting us from beneath, like it coming through the mattress, from the sides. It won't let you go to sleep just wear you out, and when it's going on for eight, ten months, um, it's getting period pretty tiring, you know. It wears you down. 
sleep paralysis it can happen to a significant portion of the population. People will wake up in the middle of the night with a sense of pressure and they're unable to move and it feels like something's holding them. You've got that tactile experience as real as the things that you experience on a day to day. And that can be very terrifying. Determined to find out what is causing the activity in her home, over the years, Gaynor has invited teams of investigators to the house. One paranormal investigator came around um, who says that he could feel the porthole here. So the rigged the camera up. This camera took so many photos a second. I was really surprised what they caught. Oh, wow. I don't even know what to, that's just kind of very odd. Trying to look at it from a scientific point of view or trying to debunk it and say, oh, it could be this. It, it doesn't look like anything, just some weird smoke. That's actually pretty impressive. During investigations, people have captured all sorts of mists and anomalies and that sort of thing, but I've not ever actually seen one quite like that. As soon as I've seen it, I believe that was the bad spirit. I don't think he's here all the time. He comes and goes when he wants. But when he is here, he likes to let you know he's here. You just get used to it. Plenty of times I've been terrified and run out the house. I don't think I'd be able to get rid of it. And actually, I wouldn't want to get rid of it. it to me, it's its home as well as my, my home. As long as it don't start hitting me again or setting fire to my house. It sounds really, really nuts, and I wouldn't believe yourself if, I came, if you came out with it. But it did happen. You know, everything I've said, you know, it's happened. It's all happened. You can be a healthy, sober, entirely sane person, and yet you can experience this extremely unreasonable thing, but be an entirely reasonable person. And a lot of this stuff is down to interpretation if you don't have access to the explanation. I've dealt with a similar case, just not with fire. I deemed it as demonic activity. I can't sit here and say that it's not possible that there is a demonic entity haunting that house. I would love to investigate it myself to find out more. In popular culture, malevolent spirits are well documented, but in reality, most mean no harm to those who are living. In Mould in the UK, paranormal investigator Lee and shop owner Katie are setting up some equipment in the cellar in the hopes of making contact with a spirit called Sarah. So we're going to start down on this level. I think we'll start the investigation low. So this is the lowest point of the building. So what I'm going to do to start with is just use this bit of kit, it's called a REM pod, and it reacts to static energy. So anybody that goes close to it gives up any static energy. Turn it on, and then if anything goes near it, the lights will go off. We'll place it on the floor, just above the well. We'll set it off. And then if I can just ask you just to move so you're a meter away from it, so it's nice and set. I'm interested in putting the REM pod above where the well was. In the paranormal field, we have discovered that when you have running water or any form of a water source, you tend to have more activity. And it could be because the flowing water, it tends to create more energy, which they can use to manifest. Spirits will draw energy from anywhere they can get it. But if there's a natural source of energy, it's pretty much just like a big battery pack for them. With the REM pod set, Lee and Katie move into the room next door, and Lee introduces a trigger object. The theory of it is we get any object, and then we can ask out for spirits to come and move for us in any way they can. Now, if they can pick it up, fantastic, that'd be amazing. But all we're asking for is just a slight movement anyway. 
And I find we get a lot better response when it is something attached to the building rather than a foreign object that I've brought in or somebody else. Lee decides to use a balloon from the party shop and a machine called a K2 meter that detects electromagnetic changes. Will this entice Sarah to come and play? So you've got the K2 meter in your hand. Mm -hmm. Also, hold the balloon in your hand. And let's go down. So, Sarah, if you are here, you want to come and take this balloon off of Katie for us? Come and see if you can grab the balloon for us. Come on, Sarah, you can have the balloon. I'm not going to hurt you. Go on, pull it out of my... I've just got my thumb on it. I just don't want to let it go, cos it'll go on the ceiling. Go on, you can pull it. Go on, that's it. It's really strange that you're holding it as steady as you can. I can see you trying... Yeah. You can almost see it almost kind of as if someone's tugging at it. It's very, very slight. A lot of people that were doing this experiment were going, there's nobody there because the lights aren't going. Uh -huh. It could be that it's not electrical energy that they're giving off. It's not like a K2 meter can pick up on it. You see the same principle with Ouija boards. It's something that psychologists would call an idiomotor effect, where you can have people that are making motor actions that they are themselves not aware of. It's a bit tricky to get your head around. It's one of those things that are deeply counterintuitive this idea that you could be moving, in this case, your hands. Those motor signals are coming from you, but you're not aware that they're coming from you. So effectively what's happening is you're interpreting an internal agency as being an external force. I do find on investigations when you are speaking about them, it kind of piques their interest. Whereas other times you'll have spirits that don't want anything to do with you. The moment you have investigators go in, it goes completely flat because they're sick and tired of people there all the time going, what's your name? How old are you? How long have you been here? Do you know that you've died? Worst question ever. In the search for more substantial evidence and to encourage any spirits to interact with his equipment, Lee plunges the room into darkness. Okay, Sarah, if you are here, really, really good, <laughs> straight away, fantastic. Thank you, Sarah, that's amazing. So that is you, Sarah, take it right up to red for us again. I love using a K2, but wondering, uh, does somebody have their mobile on? Because uh, mobile will make the, the lights light up, not like that typically, it'll be, uh, very fast and furious on that. So that looks fine there. I was quite impressed with that. You're asking it to spike to red, and then it's going to red. That is pretty compelling evidence that obviously something's happening. Siri, are you still here with us? Or is it somebody else that's here wanting to talk to us? Here, we want to speak to you. Only one hour into the investigation, could the spirit of Sarah already be making contact from beyond the grave? Or could it be someone or something else? The paranormal is defined as something beyond normal explanation. In Canada in 2018, a drive through the forests of Quebec was made even more memorable when something unexpected was discovered on holiday footage. A group of friends stopped to admire and film a moose grazing by the side of the road. Only later did they realize the moose wasn't the only attraction. Oh man, it's very cool. Eh? Oh wow, that's a little creepy. I mean, I'd love to capture that on camera myself. It's really tough to believe anything on the internet. 
However, I mean, it doesn't make it any less creepy. I mean, this is the stuff that horror movies are made out of, isn't it? It is always dark, it's the woods, there's something sinister going on. Off we go. But actually, it's probably just light playing tricks on the brain. It really does intrigue me, and I do believe there's actually creatures out there that will think they're something they're not. But I think that wants something on the windscreen. Any paranormal experience is open to interpretation, but if more than one person can corroborate the activity, the evidence holds more weight. In Derby, in the UK, an unassuming house appears to be the focal point for paranormal activity that the whole family has witnessed. I didn't know anything about the property when I first moved in. It was just a nice, quiet area. It wasn't straight away when things started happening, um, kind of progressed. Kimberly started to hear footsteps upstairs when the children were in bed. I used to go up and check if it was them walking around and they were fast asleep. And that was all really that I used to experience. And then as soon as I met Mark, um, things started happening more. Kimberly didn't tell her new partner, Mart, about what she'd experienced, but it wasn't long before he had his first encounter. We were both sat downstairs watching a film, um, and I could hear walking around, footsteps upstairs. And at first, I didn't think anything of it, but then it, something went off in my head thinking, the children aren't here tonight, who's upstairs? And I looked at Kimberly and thought, She's walking around upstairs, can you hear that? She looked at me and she says, that happens quite often. Sometimes we all hear a phantom knock on the door or running up the stairs because we've heard it so frequently, we're so used to that, that sometimes we can play that out as if it's happening, but it's just your brain, you know, saying, this is what normally happens. Over time, the activity became increasingly frequent. Me and my children were downstairs and we heard my daughter's guitar playing by herself. Toys started to go off on the road. It's drawn to the kids' toys. It's interacting with the toys. It seems to be in the kids' rooms. It's playing the guitar. That's the kind of activity you would expect from a haunting that's a child. There's a belief that spirit entities are attracted to the energy of children because they're so full of life. You know, you've heard the stories of kids having imaginary friends, seeing things. There are stories where entities imitate children to get your attention. And then once they're in, that's when the real trouble starts. One day when Mart was away, Kim and the kids had their first eyewitness experience. It was at that period where everything was happening in this house. Um, it was just before bedtime, and me and my four children were all in uh, my daughter's room together. And me and my daughter were at the end of her bed, closest to the landing. And we were chatting away, and the boys were playing. My son's bedroom was on the other side of the landing. My son had a cushion on his bed, and it got thrown across the landing and landed near, near me and my daughter. It was amazing to see, a little bit scary, but it was amazing, really. There was no explanation for it, really, because me, my daughter and my three boys were all in this room together, um, so it couldn't have been any of my children that did it. Something falls off a shelf or you see something roll across the floor. If you have that way of thinking, you think, well, that must mean that there is some kind of paranormal activity attached to that, rather than thinking that's a coincidence or the window's open and a gust of wind blew something across the floor. Some people are primed to believe that way. And if that's the way your mind works, that is the meaning you're going to give that event. Push and throw in. <laughs> I think I'd be a little bit worried, wouldn't you? While certain locations can be unlikely places for paranormal activity, when a building has been in existence for 400 years, the likelihood increases dramatically. 
In Mould in the UK, the investigation of the 17th century party shop continues. It already seems a spirit has attempted to make contact via an electromagnetic detector. So Lee moves the investigation upstairs and introduces a high-tech piece of kit that allows spirits to communicate. So what I thought we would do is, up here, is do something a little bit more vocal. So what we're going to use is what's called a PSB7. Spirit box. My favourite piece of equipment. What it's designed to do is, is to scan the radio waves in reverse. So it's going everything back very, very quickly. So I'll set it to do around nine channels per second. And what we're wanting is for full words to come out. So hello, mm -hmm. or a name, or some information. What we do is we'll turn it on. Okay, if there is anybody here, my name's Lee. Sarah, or anybody else that's here, I'm here, Lee, and Kate is here. Can you come and say hello for us? Hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. Straight away, hello, Katie. Hmm. I could hear that too. See, that is really interesting because the voice that comes through is coming through over several sweeps and it is the same voice. It's not particularly a clear response, but it does tell me that there is something trying to communicate with them. To hear a complete word, or even better, a complete sentence, that, that's not explainable. Can you, can you give me your name? Henry. The name. So that's very, I think, very compelling. Potentially what's happening here is if we're going to be like an objective test, we're going to say like, I want to get the name Sarah from the equipment, then getting the name Henry is a failure. But then saying that, oh, there's another entity here named Henry turns what would otherwise have been a miss into a new and exciting piece of evidence. When you're on a case, you get excited. It's understandable, you want to hear things. But Henry, that was clear. If I had actually heard that name and I'd asked the question, can you say your name, and you get Henry, that's a pretty compelling piece of evidence to have. Hello. Do you know me? <laughs> did you know Katie when you was living? When you was alive, did. did you? I did. The fact that it was somebody named Henry and somebody that she likely knew personally, I think that's fascinating. It seemed to know the shop owner personally. So it could very well have been somebody that was drawn to her that comes in with her rather than the location itself. Was that somebody trying to get in touch with us that knew Katie, that knew of the shop, that was fairly recent? We was expecting to be investigating Sarah. So that's really thrown a spanner in the works and shook myself and Katie up. The paranormal world is an ever-growing community of people, all with one aim, capturing evidence and proof of its existence. In an undisclosed location in America, after seeing strange shadows and furniture moving, the homeowners called in a team of paranormal investigators to help solve the mystery. On day 16 of the investigation, at 12.44 a.m., this footage was captured on an infrared camera. Okay, that's good. Okay. What I think's going on there is your very old school case of fishing line. I really want to believe that's real. Skeptics will claim string, you know, fishing wire and all that sort of stuff. I would imagine if it was to be pulled out by a string, it would just come out and fall down. But this seems to have, the projectile seems to be going up and out, which looks to me like there's a force behind it somehow. 
don't know what to make of that because I can't see the other side of it. So because I can't, I've got missing information, I don't know. If it is paranormal, if it is actually real, that's a great capture on camera. Fantastic. While some people fear the paranormal, others welcome activity. In Derby, in England, Kimberly and Mart believe their home is haunted by playful spirits. I've experienced and heard and seen um, a lot of things happen in this house. Things started with bangs and thuds, and then it's progressed to things being thrown and, and moving and actual running around rather than just walking. And I think if it carries on the way it is, maybe they will show themselves to us. Now convinced they were not alone, Kimberly and Mart called in the help of paranormal investigators. We were all sat in this room and they all had their equipment ready and, and nothing really was happening. And all of a sudden, everything started going crazy. Not you. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. Well done, thank you. Thank you. The flashing bowls were all going off. We had a toy that was constantly going off. Yeah, that yeah. Hey, up. Oh, shh. It's a lamb. I was going to say, is it the lamb or the lamb? It's the lamb. It's a tractor. Oh, yeah. It's not voice activated. Uh, there's four buttons on there that actually have to be pressed. You can't nudge it or anything. And the same goes for the flashy ball. I would have been in my element sitting there. I love this piece of footage. The airs on the back of my neck would have stood up. <laughs> that would have got my attention, definitely. Oh, wow. Toys going off and everything. Yeah, it was the first time that it was so intense but we didn't think it would be as active as it was. It was shocking. It was like they were putting on a show for us yeah. that night. It's going crackers. Everything went crazy and then it all stopped. Could there be logical explanations for a few of the things that they've experienced? Absolutely. The pillow that they thought they saw fly out of the room. So I'm not really convinced that that's paranormal. However, it seems to be that there is a spirit of a child that's drawn to the toys and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I would say they are dealing with the haunting. You're guaranteed to hear something in this house most nights. And there never seems to be an explanation for them. It isn't malicious and it isn't frightening because that's not the spirits that we have here. But you are guaranteed for something to happen. In Mould in the UK, while paranormal investigator Lee and shop owner Katie were attempting to make contact with the spirit of a little girl, Sarah, another spirit made itself known. Henry! Suddenly, the motion detection equipment that Lee had positioned over the well in the empty cellar leaps into action. Oh! The ramp the, going off. The ramp pod. Let's go and check out. Oh, my God, can we put the light on? Off. I'm a bit scared. Is Henry down here? Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's showing that it's something around that side of the REM pod, which is really good. And what's fantastic about it, we've been down here for the last hour yeah. doing an investigation. And as soon as we go upstairs and got that static energy yeah. on the radio, boom, something's <laughs> there connecting with it. Can spirits manipulate the electromagnetic fields? Can they affect equipment and that sort of thing? From experience, yes, they can. After a successful investigation at the party shop, Lee decides to wrap it up for the night. I think Katie was uh, a little bit nervous uh, before the investigation. And I think as the night went on, as things was happening, you could see that she was shocked with the level of activity that was getting. 
Yeah. You can almost see it almost kind of as if someone's tugging at it. She's experienced things herself, and people in the shop have experienced things, but not to the level that we actually got. When Henry came through, and then when he actually went, the REM pod uh, kicked off. And it was as if he'd gone from here down in the cellar and started, you know, playing around with it. <laughs> yeah, and it wouldn't stop either. I was a little bit scared, to be honest. This has been Katie's last night in this historic shop, as she's selling up and moving on. But it's certainly been eventful. I feel sad. It's a piece of history, and it's a shame because I'm leaving it. But yeah, hopefully the spirits will go on. I would like to have seen a little bit more with the spirit box, uh, because what they did get through, uh, the fact that it was somebody named Henry and somebody that she likely knew personally, that is really interesting. And it kind of takes away possibly that, OK, is it Sarah that's haunting the place? I really like this evidence. Especially with the history of the location, the age of the location, the fact that there is potentially a well and that water source that you know could contribute to any of the activity there. Yes, there could very well be something there. Tonight, we investigate a haunted house in a cemetery. That's just last. Are you in the hall? Evaluate strange activity in a location with a gruesome past. Seven monks burnt to death virtually where I'm sat now. And we examine a poltergeist case in the UK. I love that. I love things like that. To sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behavior. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work and some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. I am on the lookout for undeniable proof. All hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. What the hell is going on there? The paranormal is defined as something beyond normal explanation. And there's a belief that creatures exist on our planet that are also unexplained. In the foothills of Northeast Provo in Utah in 2019, a strange upright figure was spotted in the distance. Believing the creature to be a Sasquatch, the eyewitness began filming on his mobile phone. I'm gonna get, I, you can, no, you'll be fine. I'm just gonna get more footage of the Sasquatch. Oh, Bigfoot! <laughs> Sasquatch, Sasquatch. Okay, seriously, look how big it is. He's just chilling. I love Sasquatch, Bigfoot, I love Bigfoot. Who don't, I mean, I've heard so many stories about Bigfoot um, being uh, from an alien planet. It's very well known that Sasquatch is alive and well and living in the woods of Ohio, OK? Don't let them tell you it's in California. Don't let them tell you it's in Colorado. It is in the Midwest, in the forests of Ohio. I don't think it is a human. I think it's a Sasquatch. Because look, he's on the mountain, way far back on the mountain. But look how huge he is. It's a wonderful piece of footage. I'd love to think that was real. You know what I'd really love is for this guy to have gone up to the Sasquatch and gone, wow, this is an incredible connection we're making. But that never seems to quite happen, which is where you kind of go, well, was that what I thought it was? Or did I really just want to believe that? I personally think this clip is a guy in a suit, which, I mean, it wouldn't be the first person to do that. Do I think Bigfoot could be real? Yes. He's just chilling. And in 2019, the Indian Army believe they have found footprints belonging to its distant cousin, the Yeti. So perhaps the reclusive Bigfoot really does exist. For most people, their home is their sanctuary. 
So sharing that space with the spirit of a former resident is not a welcome prospect. In a quaint village near Reading in the UK, when couple Jay and Carol moved into their new home, it quickly became apparent they were not alone. I didn't believe in the paranormal until I had a few experiences of my own. The first being lying in bed and it felt like someone had sat on the end of the bed and I thought it was my husband, but I looked round and he's fast asleep. Soon after, an ominous shadow started to appear regularly. Me and the wife uh, just watching the TV and at the corner of my eye, I saw the shadow walk past the two doors. I said, look, the shadow's back. But it was an incident with their grandson that really caught their attention. He was sleeping in the back bedroom. He woke up about two o'clock in the morning and he came to my bedside and said, Granny, I'm frightened. I said, why? He said, because there's a ghost in my bedroom. I said, was it a man? Was it a lady? And he said, it was a lady. It did frighten me, I must admit. Desperate to find out if the phenomena they had been experiencing could be paranormal, Jay and Carol decided to invite a local investigation team into their home. So after listening to what Jay and Carol had told us, we decided to put a CCTV pointing towards where Jay had seen a shadow, and we decided to set up an SLS camera in the back bedroom. While some members of the team watched the CCTV footage remotely, Steve and another colleague began investigating in the bedroom. We're on the back bedroom where the lady was spotted by the window. This device just shows me that you're here. We mean you no harm. Please come back and communicate with us, see if we can help you. The SLS camera is able to map potential figures when the infrared beams it emits are interrupted by something or someone. There she is. What could potentially happen here would be, is this machine getting a false positive from something else in the environment that isn't necessarily attributable to a body? They can map things in. Say, for instance, there's a hoodie or a coat or something that's hanging over a wardrobe door that kind of looks like a humanoid figure. But this seems to be just a blank wall. That's definitely, in my opinion, could be something paranormal. As the SLS camera mapped in a possible figure in the bedroom, another member of the team saw something appear on the CCTV. What are they getting scared of downstairs? We've just seen a man or a figure yeah. walk across. The CCTV camera had caught a black shadow walking across the door to the stairs. Often, something will happen in another room while you're not there. This is why we use locked off cameras. It looks like it could be a shadow figure, which would be amazing if it was an actual shadow figure caught on camera, because that's the kind of things that we're looking for. The best thing about that investigation was the fact that we had two bits of evidence that happened at, at the same time, and we can now look back on that and go, is it paranormal, is it not? But there's a good chance it could be from the evidence that we'd found. For Carol and Jay, the evidence that Steve and his team caught on camera brought a huge sense of relief. It made me feel, although, you know, you're not imagining these things, the truth is being found out. And I felt quite content at that. It actually made everything seem calmer. A lot calmer. Respecting those who have passed away is both spiritually and culturally important across the globe. And for many, the final resting place of a loved one is sacred. But due to popular culture and horror films, cemeteries have also been ingrained into our psyche as places to be afraid of. 
So in Liverpool in the UK, Sean and Bex were in for a shock when they discovered the location of the house of their dreams. When we first came to view this house, we pulled up and we were like, oh, right, OK, this is inside a cemetery. But I said to Sean, should we go? You know, we don't want to live in a cemetery. And then we go to turn away, and that's when the, the man who owned the house was waiting for us, if you like, by the door. And so we had to come in, and we fell in love with it. We didn't know anything about the house in terms of it being haunted or anything. We just blindly moved in. It was after we'd settled and we started making changes to the house and the children were here that we started noticing different things started to happen around the house. If you think about this particular property, I think you've already got the scene being set. It's surrounded by a cemetery. It's an old property. So for me, people moving into such a location are probably already primed for supernatural activity potentially to take place. In particular, a room on the third floor seemed to be a focal point for activity. We can be in bed and we can hear people upstairs walking. And when me and Bex have gone out and stood on the hallway, we can physically hear it even clearer. It's a guest room. Nobody's up there unless they're staying here in the house. One night, when Sean's mum was babysitting, she had an experience she will never forget. Ooh, I haven't slept in this room since it happened. After I put the children to bed, lay on this side of the bed here, fell asleep, and to be woken up by being shaken. And then when I looked, there was a hand pulling the covers back. So I sat up and to see a man stood at the bottom of the bed. Ever since that night, I, I refused to sleep in this bedroom under no circumstances when I come up here on my own. So the fact that this is happening at night in a bedroom and it's waking her up does touch on a really interesting neurological phenomena uh, called sleep paralysis. It's this idea that when you're on the edges of sleep, either just waking up or just falling asleep, what can happen is that you can have images from dreams that will actually intrude on your waking experience of reality. So a lot of people believe that cemeteries are haunted, but I wouldn't want to hang out there at all. If I died, I'm going to go to a place that I absolutely love to be, somewhere warm like Hawaii. I would not be hanging around. Even if it's a beautiful house next to the cemetery, the only way I would do that is if I had lived in the house. Because of all the activity in the house, Sean and Bex began to research its past. There was a man who lived here, and his name was Ginge. He passed inside the house. He's buried just down the road inside the cemetery. I think that the spirit that's doing this is one of two spirits. Maybe it is a child because it's mischievous, or it's Ginge. I, I don't know who it is. Throughout their time living in the house, Sean and Bex have experienced a lot of paranormal activity, but only once have they been able to capture evidence on camera. That evening, Sean was in the bed watching a bit of TV, and that's when Sean heard a bang. And then I noticed the wardrobe door was moving. We never capture this. So if it's going to move when we're sat here and the lights are on, is it going to do it when I've got the camera up? Four, three, Two, one. Nope. Never works. No, 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 no. That moved, that moved, that moved, that moved. So I always look for interaction because that shows that there, there's something happening. The fact that they caught that, yeah, very good piece of evidence, but we need to look deeper into it, a lot deeper. In search of more conclusive evidence, we've sent paranormal investigator Jane Harris to the house to see if their claims can be proved by someone independent. Hi, Hi welcome to our home. Thank you. But before the investigation gets underway, Jane has already uncovered some unsettling new information. When there were changes going on in the area, roads were being widened, areas were being redeveloped, 
Graves that were disturbed were exhumed and actually reburied at Everton Cemetery. There are multiple graves at that cemetery of people that don't actually belong there. That could create restless, wandering spirits. So potentially we could have a really interesting evening. Paranormal activity knows no bounds and is often accidentally captured and only discovered later. In 2018, in Indonesia, a filmmaker was exploring an abandoned house, believing they were alone. But as they walked through the dimly lit residence, they unwittingly stumbled across someone or something lurking in the shadows. I don't know what I'm looking at here. They're moving the cameras so quickly that it's hard to usually try to keep it slower so you catch anything. I do see a figure of sorts, but what figure I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> it's dark. It feels like a basementy area. All the ingredients are there for something. And you know what? Sometimes you see funny shapes in, in the half light. I, I didn't. I mean, it's creepy. Like, if that was a, a haunted house and I was walking around with a torch and shone it down a passageway and saw a woman with long black hair stood there, yeah, I'm not going to stick around. It would catch me off guard and it would give me a fright and it'd be a great horror haunted house. Do I think it's a real paranormal event? No. There are a vast array of people across the globe who describe themselves as members of the paranormal community. Like-minded believers, all hoping to capture definitive proof of the unexplained. In Nottingham, in the UK, one particular location has captured the imagination of many teams of investigators. Mansfield Village has a long and varied past. The current building dates back to the 1700s, but it's believed a structure has existed here since the 1500s. When we first bought the building, there were a lot of strange things that, that happened. My ex-husband was here working late one night by himself. He heard a door keep shutting, which was extremely strange at that point because we didn't really have any doors within the building. Upon hearing it had been purchased, Local paranormal investigator Lee Roberts was intrigued to find out if the historic building had experienced anything unusual. I quickly came down here, knocked on the door, knew that it was like a building site when I got here, and asked the owner, Kelly, if she'd had any ghost activity while they'd been here. She said, come on in. Let me tell you a few stories. My first experience here, I think, was actually my daughter. We were downstairs in one of the rooms. She was never been that keen of that room. She was always in a rush to get out of it. And I handed her a padlock to play with, to see if she could open the padlock. And she just turned to me and said, Mummy, was this in the fire? And I said, said, what fire? Unknown to Kelly and her daughter, the location held a gruesome secret. There was a secret tunnel that came from St Peter's Church. And research tells us that seven monks was hiding from soldiers uh, in the 1500s to try and get away from, from those who was taking possession back of the churches and the abbeys. Eventually, they just burnt the barn down. And we've been told that seven monks burnt to death, virtually where I'm sat now. She would never have known that. This building as stands now has never been on fire. It's never burnt down or anything like that. So that wouldn't be something that she would have heard us, heard us say. Keen to experience activity for himself, Lee decided to investigate the property one night on his own. Within the first 10 minutes, I was calling out and I heard what I thought was a piano playing. So I went on a little walk around to see what I could find. And lo and behold, only around 15 feet away from me was a piano hidden away under the balcony. Now, I knew there was nobody else in the building. I had been locked in the building. I had the keys. There was nobody there. With no plausible explanation for the activity, 
Lee was determined to try and capture this on camera during another investigation. So I placed the camera on the pool table, turned the infrared camera on, and left it running for around 40 minutes. We came back, checked the camera, and around 10 minutes into the footage, the third key in from the right-hand side had played on its own. A piano playing on its own, I'm out of there. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anything around it. There doesn't seem to be any natural explanation for that piano playing on its own. That's really creepy. In the past, seances and table tipping were common tools used to provoke spirits to interact. Today, the equipment is more sophisticated and seeks to detect the energy of spirits in the atmosphere. In Liverpool in the UK, paranormal investigator Jane Harris is about to begin investigating the house in the cemetery and has decided to start in the bedroom where Sean and Bex captured the footage of the moving wardrobe door. I'm going fully kitted out. We're taking absolutely everything because you never know what piece of kit will work well in which situations. In the bedroom, Jane has set up a spirit box to monitor the temperature. On the hunt for electronic voice phenomena, she's recording the investigation. And Sean and Bex are using equipment that monitors changes in the electromagnetic field. They begin by calling out to any spirits. My name's Jane, and if you want to come forward this evening and speak to me, I would love to speak to you. My name's Sean. And I'm Bex. You know who we are. Don't be shy. If Ginge is here, or any of the children, can you communicate and give us an audible sound? Do you like to play in this room? Do you play with the wardrobe? I just felt, when I said that, a really cold breeze just really? came straight onto my hand through that gap in the door there. Can you make the door move for us? <gasps> Are you touching the door? No. That door's moving. The glass moved. Can you make I the door you... move? I've just gone cold down this side. Down that side? Yeah. Feel Are you near Bex? Can you feel this? Put your hands here. Are you... Oh, yeah. Can you feel it? That's a child. That must be a child for that height. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Alarmed, yeah. That's cold. Move closer to us now. As the temperature drops, Bex's equipment also registers a change in the electromagnetic field. Could a spirit be trying to communicate? We always associate cold spots to be spiritual. Is a ghost present because an area has gone cold straight away? What's interesting is that Jane and Bex both feel this happen. Now, the fact that what looks like an EMF detector is going off at the same time, that kind of validates what they're feeling. So that's a really good piece of evidence, having two different things validate one potentially paranormal event. Kind of curious to see where it goes from there, because they think it's a child. So that'll be really interesting to see if we see that progress any. Move closer to us now. Somebody just touched me on the shoulder. Poked. <laughs> no way, and I was right behind you. Right behind you. The temperature's you. just gone up five degrees, exactly behind when, you. When you felt that. I felt that. As the activity in the room intensifies, the spirit box turns itself on. Let's try again. That was really weird. What? That is crazy, right? Like, volume won't go down. It won't, I can't turn it on. I can't get the volume to go down. No way. That is, I can't get this to respond at all. Right, I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After a flurry of activity, the EMF detectors also fall silent. It's very clear that they're picking up on a lot of static energy around the device. You can hear the device clearly going off numerous times. The fact that she is feeling something touch her 
To then have such a huge rise in the temperature going up by five degrees and then having the device switch on. That's three things at the same particular moment that definitely seems like it could very well be paranormal. I can't pick up on anything now or hear anything unusual. No, no, I, it's just I feel no. like it's gone. gone from this Whoever was here has moved. Just as the investigation in the bedroom is about to come to an end, another piece of equipment springs into action. It's just flashed, has it? So it's almost just flashed, really? yeah. It seems someone is trying to enter the room. Yeah, still on. That just did that. But just once, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. one footstep. Are you in the hall? Poltergeist activity is believed to be one technique spirits use to communicate with the living. In 2016, in Cambridgeshire, in the UK, this footage was captured on an infrared camera. The homeowners have been led to believe that the activity is connected to them, as this has happened in other houses they've owned. I love that. I love things like that. It looks a bit set up, but I, I still love those kind of videos where there's poltergeist activity. I didn't see any string. That's the type of thing that does happen a lot if there's something in your house. They'll knock things over to get your attention. And poltergeists a lot of times will even uh, do things, they'll throw it at people. If that's legit, that's one of the most phenomenal pieces of evidence captured on camera at the time. There's clearly no one under the table. If that's legit, then impressive. In Nottingham in the UK, poltergeist activity has also potentially been captured in a historic building now known as Mansfield Village. So owner Kelly, decided to allow other teams in to investigate the location. And to her surprise one night, as she was setting up, she witnessed more evidence on CCTV. On this one occasion, when I was checking the um, footage downstairs um, in the area that they were going to be, be going to, as I looked up, I noticed that a mist appeared on the screen. First instinct was a panic because I did think it was smoke or something on fire. And when we get down there, um, there's no, no actual reason for the, the fog appearing. Um, come back up, check the footage again, the, the fog is still there. And then within a few minutes, the fog has disappeared. Paranormal investigator Lee Roberts also witnessed this phenomena. The next night, I came in, quickly turned the CCTV on, and looked, and lo and behold, there was a strange mist, and it starts as almost like a sandstorm, so very, very low on the floor. Not knowing the location is really difficult for me because I don't know where there are any open doorways or any open windows or cracks in you know, the windows or anything like that. It looks kind of like a warehouse. I would say that that's just moisture and a, a decent airflow through the place. I've seen this in other paranormal videos. Are we looking at condensation? So is that water vapour being reflected by the infrared light? So it's being caught in the infrared spectrum. For owner Kelly and investigator Lee, a supernatural explanation cannot be ruled out. If ghosts are real, then that potentially could have been what, what you're seeing. I like to try and disprove a lot of it. People were talking about atmospheric pressure and things like that, but it stayed through too many seasons for it to have been something like that. And then one day, the mist just disappeared. In Liverpool in the UK, 
Paranormal investigator Jane Harris is investigating the possible haunting of a home situated in a cemetery. She's already detected activity in the bedroom, which owners Bex and Sean believe might be the spirits of children. So, she decides to move the investigation outside, hopeful the spirit of Ginge, a former resident, will make contact. Right, so I brought you outside. It's a bit cold, but we're right on the edge of the cemetery here. And I just thought it was important because in lots of cases, the ground, the earth, is actually more important than the building itself. Yeah. We know that this has been a cemetery for over 100 years, but I think it was a burial site long before that. So I thought while we're here, we'll come outside and we'll just see if we can get anything outside the building. So let's see what they give us, if yeah. they give us anything. If you're in the house watching us, just let us know, give us a sign that you're here. Let this switch on on his own. What? Are you out here? Oh, that was like clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as you said that, boom. Are you buried in the nearby cemetery? Are you? Yeah. No way. That's really interesting because she's saying, "Give us a sign that you're here." I mean, if you were going to communicate and somebody had a communication device in their hand, I would switch it on. I would do that to get their attention. She's asking questions and you're getting an automatic response. So it shows that there's a correlation between the two uh, events happening at the same time. Um, and that's what you really want to look for in the field. Is it, is it Ginge? Are you with us? Is it children? Oh, wow. The same on there, yeah. Temperature yeah, yeah, straight yeah. down by three degrees. It's gone really cold here. Do you play outside a lot? Oh, yeah. Making that same noise. Oh, yeah. Just tell us again how many spirits are with us now. Seven, it was seven. It was seven, that was seven. All right. Eight. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Seven. Are you Ginge? No way. Oh. Yeah? Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah at the same time. Yeah. Ginge, have you got an untold story? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was yeah. like, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. Did something happen to you? Something that no one knows about? Yeah. yeah. I'm hearing the same. <laughs> that was quite interesting. Uh, the responses seem to be right there on demand. Um, and everything that they're hearing, I can, I can hear quite clearly as well. So it's interesting. The voices and the ostensibly static noise, there's potentially something really interesting going on here in terms of a psychological phenomena that people call pareidolia. Noisy can mean like physical sound noisy, like the static, and it can also mean just kind of disrupted any kind of like visual information this can apply to as well. But the idea is you're getting kind of a chaotic input and then you're mapping on meaning into that input. So the meaning is coming from the people's minds. It's not necessarily coming from the stimulus itself. Were you murdered in? What? Answer the question again, Jin. Were you murdered? I had killed me. Jin, who murdered you, can you say? The temperature was down to the minus five there. It's now back dead centre. Yeah, that's strange. Say your name. Ginge. Did you just do Ginge. that and get yeah, yeah, laugh? Yeah, 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 yeah. No! It seems Ginge has finally made contact. But does he also have a request from the afterlife? Are there other restless spirits that need help? Out. 
Advances in technology have led to paranormal investigators throughout the world, edging ever closer to understanding previously unexplained phenomena. Although the science behind some occurrences may be explained, some remain inexplicable. In London in the UK in 2018, this footage was recorded on CCTV. The current residents believe a previous owner died in the garage outside, and they have no explanation for the phenomena they uncovered. That could be a number of things. That, that could be dust reflecting off the IR. That could also be um, a spotlight from a police helicopter. I've tried to think, OK, was it a spider? Was it a raindrop? But not, no, no, I don't think it was. There were no reflections from car headlights because the house is away from the main road. I would find it very difficult to debunk that. It's a, a fantastic piece of CCTV footage of an anomaly that we cannot explain. As technology progresses, the options for gathering evidence grow, and the ability to experience an encounter in real time with multiple witnesses is now a possibility. At Mansfield Village in Nottingham in the UK, paranormal investigator Lee believes he was able to live stream genuine proof of poltergeist activity. So it was the 5th of August, 2017. I arrived to do my usual duties of looking after a paranormal investigation team that had hired out the village. On this occasion, I locked the door behind me, walked upstairs and turned the CCTV on. But at that point, I could hear bang, bang. That's not a normal sound in the village. I wasn't here on this night, and Lee messaged me to say that he was hearing a noise downstairs. And I said, well, there's nobody else in the building. On the CCTV, I looked, and I could just see that a door in area two was moving. I like to go live and share evidence, but also, I'm in the building on my own. It's a little bit of security for people to see what's happening. I didn't know at that point what I was walking into. So I've gone live. We're going to go down. The, the door is locked. I always lock the door behind me. Um, it's a bit nerve-wracking because I am here on my own. Shit, if you, if you guys can hear that. Quite a loud bang. Coming from the other side of here. Just trying to reconnect you guys. The signal just slightly went. I don't know if you can see this, the door is, is banging. You know, take my hat off to him for having the bravado to go down there anyway <laughs> and uh, on his own. If there is anybody there, right, I'm going to try and stop this door. Right, there is literally no force behind this door at all. Is there anyone there? There is literally nobody there. To me, that just could be that there's really high wind outside and it's it's drawing that door and it's banging it over and over. Is there anybody there? It's definitely a very good piece of evidence. He should not have touched that door. He should have left that alone. Let the... Uh, entity or whatever it is that's happening, do its thing. Then I would have asked, 
Now make that stop. Make the door stop. Open it wide. Close it to see whether or not you're getting a response. It is an interesting piece. Do I think it's paranormal? Mm -mm. However, for owner Kelly, the evidence that's been gathered over the last five years has resulted in more questions than answers. When Lee came, I was hoping that a lot of the things that, that I was feeling and other people were feeling, he would be able to say, no, there's, there's nothing here. Because when you have to work somewhere all the time, you want to feel safe and you don't want to feel uncomfortable. But unfortunately, that, that wasn't the case. In Liverpool in the UK, the investigation into the possible haunting of the house in the cemetery is almost over. Investigator Jane and homeowners Bex and Sean believe they have made contact with spirits in two separate locations. During the investigation in the bedroom, Jane also recorded the session, and upon reviewing the audio, she believes she has further proof that contact was made. I'm not going to tell you what I think I hear. I'll play it for you. You tell me what you think it sounds like. Thank you to the spirits of the house for there. allowing me. Did you hear it? I heard it. Yeah, that was go, wasn't it? My name's Jane, and if you want to come forward this evening and speak to me, I would love to speak to you. There. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? Now, I don't know if that was Jane. I heard something. I don't hear Jane. I do hear a man's voice, though, very close up. A lot of the times on investigations, you will have spirits call you out by name. I've had this happen numerous occasions, actually, be it through EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, or through a spirit box. And if you want to come forward this evening and speak to me, I would love to speak to you. You're dealing with electronics. Electronics make weird and wonderful sounds. The technology gives legitimacy, but it's the interpretation of what the person is saying that kind of gives the believability. So you've got two things going on at, at the same time. Here's the tech, this is what it's showing, and I'm going to interpret what it means for you. And to somebody who is looking for an answer, that is very deeply seductive. If nobody was speaking at that time, I would class that as EVP. Um, but it's very difficult to make out what it is actually saying. I would love to speak to you. After a long night ghost hunting, Jane decides to wrap up the investigation and review the evidence. Overall, it was quite surprising, actually, because in a short space of time, we did experience what I would consider quite a lot of paranormal activity. We had electronic voice phenomena recorded, the activity in Sean and Beck's bedroom as well, that really built. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Going alarm, yeah. yeah. And then when we went outside, and we actually got responses to questions. Are you out here? Having Jane in tonight, a second opinion, almost, it does make you feel like you're not going nuts. And, and you look at each other and think, we're not crazy after all, you know, somebody else has experienced what we've been experiencing for the, for the last five years. But was the evidence captured enough to convince our experts? Definitely there is something there. I mean, whether it's a child or not, pretty impressive. It seems to have many things happening at the same time validating those individual experiences. It definitely tells me that there's something going on there. At first, I was unconvinced, but then, towards the end, you start seeing more intelligence coming through to suggest that they are actually witnessing something at this location. When it comes to intelligent spirits, interactive spirits. There's one theory that most of those spirits have unfinished business. So what they want to do is get a message to the living. And hopefully, by conducting paranormal investigations, we can occasionally just get a glimpse into that. Tonight, we search for lingering spirits at a hotel with a dark past. What on earth? It's moving across the ceiling? 
evaluate evidence from the most haunted house in Britain. She was dragged up the stairs by something unseen. And examine if a vanishing person in Mexico is in fact an apparition. That's interesting. To sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behavior. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work. And some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. I am on the lookout for undeniable proof. All hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. What the hell is going on there? The search for life on other planets is an ongoing human quest. With so much uncharted territory in space, it's impossible to say that intelligent life doesn't exist elsewhere in the universe. So, in 2016, in Milwaukee, USA, when a mysterious ball of light appeared in the sky, residents of one neighborhood were drawn out onto the streets. Believing it to be an unidentified flying object, one neighbor starts to film. Look at that! That is, those are aliens coming down here, y'all. Look at, it's coming down the same direction. I love him. Oh, bless him. He makes me laugh. Oh, it's breaking up. Oh, it's six, it's eight, it's nine. Oh, sh <laughs> I'm as shocked as he is. Oh, no, I did not expect that. I've seen meteor showers. They don't look like that, though. They're a lot more random looking than that. Look, look at that, they stop. They stop, look at that. Those are aliens. Sorry, I'm trying to record it. Aliens! Oh, Aliens! Oh, Aliens! Oh, Y'all need to be shooting that! Y'all need to be shooting right here! The fact that these things seem to be so prolific, you know, throughout contemporary society and historically, potentially says that this is tapping into something fundamental about human minds more than something fundamental about visitors from other worlds. I think every human being wants to feel that there is something beyond our existence, there's something beyond the Earth, there is something in the universe. And so we search for that, that compelling moment where there is a UFO, there are aliens, there are beings beyond ourselves that exist. And I think on the positive side, that gives human beings great motivation to keep searching, keep looking, um, and keep striving for answers. At first, you think, is it a Chinese lantern? Then you think, is it some kind of weird firework? Look, they fly towards each other. They move in their formation. We do know of parachute jumps where they have flares on their heels. So when they're coming down, they're normally together. I know one thing, if they were aliens, I'm pretty sure we would have heard about them by now. <laughs> Officers, do something about that. You're not going to do nothing. A paranormal event might only occur once in any location, but it's possible that others can happen in the same place multiple times. In Pontefract in the UK, one location appears to have been at the center of continued paranormal activity for decades. The first reported incident in this suburban family home dates back 50 years when a young family claimed they were being terrorised by a dark spirit. The Pritchards took ownership of 30 East Drive, and probably for the first 10 years, we think that they had a, a very quiet time. So it wasn't until the late 60s when things started to really become very active. One night when Jean and Joe were in their bed upstairs, they could see a very tall black figure of a monk materialize at the foot of their bed. A lot of the activity seemed to center on one of the couple's children, their teenage daughter. The most dramatic event, and it definitely is uh, poltergeist 
legend, poor Diane, was at the bottom of the stairs. There were a couple of family members with her at the time. Her hair stood up on end, and she was dragged up the stairs by something unseen. Despite knowing about the house's history, current owner Bill was initially reluctant to believe the stories. I was skeptical, to say the least. Did I really believe in ghosts? Did I really believe in things beyond rational, reasonable, scientific realities? No, I didn't. But then East Drive came along. Any sane person would have got rid of this property years ago. But people are really interested in coming into this property. I prefer to call everyone that visits an investigator, and they all have collectively added to the amount of proof of whatever's in this property. During one investigation, some compelling evidence was captured on video. The shadow figure that was filmed in the front room is really interesting. The light in the room seems to ripple across the room. Thank goodness for the arrow, is all I could say. You can definitely see what appears to be a character. You can have uh, an electrical current that you can't see with the naked eye traveling across, causing the camera to be affected by that. But I'm not debunking this, because if you look at the black box in the background, when the ripple moves past the black box, the black box doesn't change shape. The ripple carries on through, so that's quite interesting. You hear all the stories about this location. It's one of the most famous haunted houses in the entire country. The story of the girl getting dragged up the stairs by her hair and everything like that, it screams horror story. It screams demonic entities lurking in the house. I still need to investigate it myself. In the paranormal world, there's a belief that spirits remain attached to places that hold significance for them. In Henley and Arden in the UK, a 16th century coaching inn is believed to have retained a few residents from the past. Landlord Maria has experienced things in the property she can't explain and has reached the point where she would like some answers. About eight years ago, my husband and I we decided to take over the White Swan. It had so much potential, but nobody was looking after it. And you could see how beautiful a building it was, crying out to be loved. So that's what we did. It's always been a coaching inn. Part of it was prison cells, people waiting their unfortunate destiny of being hung in our little courtyard at the back. The previous owner told us all about his little stories. He said they'll wait till you've been there a couple of years and then they'll start uh, uh, making themselves known. And that's how it was. In preparation for the restaurant's opening night, Maria's husband, Nigel, encountered the first of many unexplainable events. We wanted to put together some marketing material on social media. Maria was flicking through the photos afterwards and discovered there was a strange looking circular object in front of my head. It was like a mini tornado just sitting on his head, white, green, with layers. It, it was quite bizarre. It wasn't just the photographic evidence that had Maria and Nigel spooked. Others were reporting incidents too. Our housekeepers have spoken to me about things. They tell me stories about televisions turning on, hearing noises when we have no residents, glasses just smashing, just exploded on the bar. We really want answers now and find out whether or not it is paranormal activity or just our mind playing tricks on us. In search of the truth, we've sent paranormal investigator MJ Dixon to the White Swan to conduct a full investigation. This is not the first time she's set foot inside this notorious haunted hotspot. 
Several years ago, when I came over to the White Swan for the very first time, just to simply test out some equipment, and it was mainly EVP and Spirit Box that I was working with. I only intended to be here for a couple of hours. And within that space of time, only investigating in one particular room, I captured more direct Spirit Box answers than I'd ever captured in any other location. Forty. Bang on forty. Wow. Now that is amazing spirit box. Forty. It was so clear it actually caught me off guard. So it really gave me the chills. The fact that that was so crystal clear right after the investigators asked, how old are you? And it just comes out very loud and clear as 40. That's what you want. So that was brilliant. I mean, it was a couple of hours, and within minutes, I had more than I bargained for. So I decided, you know, this is a great location. It'd be great to come back and investigate. With more experience under her belt, and armed with some high-tech equipment, MJ is back to see if she can find out exactly who is haunting the White Swan. Hi. Very pleased to meet you. I have wanted to investigate the White Swan for yeah. years. Doing a proper investigation has always been on my bucket list. Shall we get started? This time, MJ has looked into the history of the White Swan to see if its past can reveal any clues. The story that intrigued me the most was the story of Virginia Black. Virginia was said to have been a lady of the night back in 1845. And as far as I know, room 18, the diamond suite, where I captured all of those voices, was her room. Eager to get the investigation underway, MJ and Maria head straight to room 18. This is my favorite room in the entire place. The story goes that she had a big row with her lover and was pushed down the stairs and died of her injuries and is still haunting the White Swan to this day. There's so many unexplained paranormal activity happening at the White Swan. It is scary, but we've come to a point that we need to find out the truth. Is Virginia back here? Supernatural encounters are often depicted as happening at night in desolate and isolated locations. Whilst our senses are heightened in the dark, priming us to be on alert, paranormal encounters can actually happen at any time of the day and in any location. In 2017 in Mexico, three friends were on a ride in a busy amusement park. One of them decided to film the experience, but upon reviewing the footage, they discovered they had unexpected company. Okay, the lady on the far side, they seem unconcerned with her presence or lack of presence. I'm assuming those are happy faces. It can sometimes be tricky when the excitement gets cranked up. The third girl disappeared. I never saw that because I wasn't, I didn't know what I was looking for. Okay, there's only two women there. That's interesting. Motion plays a big part in this. You're dealing with mobile phones and it depends on the frame rate of the camera. That's very important as well, whether or not it captures the moment. Is it two separate recordings and they're trying to portray it as if the third woman is a ghost? If that is proven to be the same ride and the same recording, then that is really interesting. Although, could she be bending down like that and she's actually not in shot? There's rational explanations, but it's an interesting clip, definitely. 
There are many different ways that a spirit can choose to manifest, from manipulating objects to becoming a fully formed apparition. But the evidence most appealing to investigators is when an entity appears to have the ability to interact on command. In 2017, at 30 East Drive in Pontefract in the UK, a group of British investigators believe they captured an intelligent response in the form of poltergeist activity. The legend of the poltergeist is that it you know, hangs around while kids are in adolescence, and feeds off their energy and then dissipates. So I thought if there ever had been a thing called a poltergeist in this house, it would have dissipated many years ago. The original events happened in the 60s. And yet here I had lots of people visiting my house telling me that that was far from the case and that there was still something very much in residence. The interesting thing about this house is it's not unusual for people to actually interact with whatever's in the house. It's not as if you just sit and wait and then things go bump. People have actually got you know, quite intelligent responses to their inquiries. One of the objects is a cabinet that we have that's full of trinkets. And it's important to add uh, from the off that the door is actually very stiff. On this particular occasion, they're asking, can you please open the cabinet door? Oh my God, I've got it on camera. Boom, it opens and it opens fully 90 degrees. Oh my God, I've got it on camera. I love that. The expression's amazing. Uh, the fact that she's just like, oh my God, I love that. that that's good. I, I do appreciate that. Door opening like that, if somebody moves, if it wasn't latched, could it have opened on its own? If you believe in something and you see evidence of that thing once or twice, and there's evidence that contradicts that 10 or 11 times, you will ignore that and just focus on the stuff that backs up what you really want to believe in. Unless somebody's got a piece of fishing wire attached to the handle of that, why is it opening? And you can clearly hear it in the lady's voice. She's obviously shocked by it happening. That's a great bit of evidence showing that there is poltergeist activity present in uh, the property, obviously captured on film. This is what I want to see. I've got it on camera. Why some spirits remain here among the living is a subject of much debate. But one possible theory is that a traumatic event could mean a spirit might be unwilling to leave their former life behind. At the White Swan in Henley and Arden in the UK, paranormal investigator MJ is attempting to make contact with Virginia Black, the former resident of room 18 who possibly died in suspicious circumstances. I have a bit of an experiment that I really want the two of us to try. Okay. Where you have one person listening to the spirit box through some noise cancelling headphones. They're isolation headphones. Mm -hmm. So you can't hear anything outside of that. That's all you're going to be able to hear is the, the spirit box. And I can do this blindfolded so I can't lip read anything okay. that you're asking. And if you ask the questions, I will see if I hear anything come through the spirit box, I'm just going to say it out loud. And hopefully whatever I'm saying out loud matches the questions that you're asking. This will be interesting. By making herself basically blind and deaf, she's taking it to another level of paranormal investigating, eliminating the possibles. Now, I'm not going to be able to hear you at all the moment okay. I put this on. OK? Whenever you're ready. Were you pushed, Virginia? Were you pushed down those stairs? Too late. What's his name? What's his name? Who did this to you? Edmund. Edmund. Wow. Now I feel cold. I have just gone so cold. Awesome. Absolutely 
awesome. The evidence captured that for me is is really, really good stuff. I mean, I love that fact that she gave an answer to a question within the space of a couple of seconds um, shows that, you know, that, that there has to be something going on there. When you're asking the questions, subconsciously your brain's listening in for a specific answer that you might want to hear or a type of answer, a name, an age. But on this scenario, because MJ's got a blindfold on and headphones on, she has got none of that suggestion. Who knows actually if Edmund's the one that pushed down, but it's, an, it's a name and that's really rare to have something like that happen, so pretty cool. Is it possible that there's some information semantically that's getting through to her? I think it would be nicer to see that under a more controlled condition of like maybe she's in another room. I'm gonna take this off for a second. I don't think we're getting much else through this. Why? Did we so coincided. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't oh my you? gosh, it that's was amazing. Quite do you have a name? And Edmund. OK, wow. This could be an intelligent haunting, a spirit that can actually answer questions and communicate with you. But was it Virginia making contact? Or is there another spirit haunting the White Swan? It might be somebody that was really fond of Virginia that's still here because of the unfinished business. Edmund. Wow. Now I feel cold. Paranormal phenomena can materialize when you least expect it. But with video technology now at our fingertips, when something unusual does occur, it's more likely than ever that it can be captured on camera. In October 2018 in Indonesia, an amateur filmmaker was recording in broad daylight in the woods alone. Through the trees, he captured a black shadow that he now believes to be a spirit. What is that? That's a strange one, that. Could it be a ghost? I'm not going to sit here and say no, it definitely can't be. If you looked at it from three or four different angles, you'd see it in three or four different ways, and you'd get a fuller picture, and that's what I need to see more of. More angles and more footage and repeated experimentation to see what was really going on. I mean, it could just be the way the tree line is in the back or something creating a humanoid figure, not necessarily paranormal. Wouldn't want to be in the woods alone, though, coming across something like that or spotting it on my footage. There are other rational explanations behind that, and the most rational one is it could just be somebody in the woods being a little bit weird and watching them. Photography has long been a popular tool used in ghost hunting, and in the past, many exciting discoveries have come to light in the darkroom. Today, though, with digital technology, results are discovered in an instant. On the 27th of November, 2017, paranormal investigator Jason Whitnell conducted his first ever investigation at 30 East Drive he and his colleague Paul spent over five hours there, and Jason considers the evidence he obtained to be unparalleled. For some reason that day, the house was like it was on fire. So we just took a camera outside and pointed and shot. As all good paranormal investigators do, I believe that when you walk around anywhere, you just continuously take pictures. Now I stood on this side, I was taking pictures. Paul was to my right, and he was focusing the camera on the door over this way. And he said to me, come and take a look at this. So I went, OK. And he said, I'm not going to point anything out. Can you see anything?
when we blew that picture up and looked at it, we saw a little girl. We were absolutely astonished. You could see the darkness of her eyes, her skin tone, the difference in hair colour. She was only there for a matter of seconds. We took a couple of pictures. We only caught her in the one frame. I thought that was a real person standing there, and they were shooting the picture knowing that the person was in the doorway. And then when I realized, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> there's, that's not really there. I have tried to debunk this photo as actually being something near to the bush or just behind the bush. And I can't. They see a little girl, and I see something that could be the stump of a tree. It could be anything. It's not very definitive. It's not really, really, really clear. If I had captured this personally on camera, then, then I would consider it to be very, very good evidence. In the past, anecdotal evidence was enough for people to believe in ghosts. Today, the standard of proof required is much higher and subject to much greater scrutiny. At the White Swan in Henley and Arden, England, paranormal investigator MJ believes she's made contact with a spirit in room 18. She's now moving the investigation downstairs to the bar to see if she can capture more evidence. This time, she's using some new equipment, the SLS camera. The SLS throws out a grid of infrared dots and it kind of maps out an area. And using that, it judges the depths and if any sort of humanoid figure breaks those dots, it'll map it in as a stick figure on the screen. Really good piece of equipment coming out now. SLS camera, brilliant. MJ also sets up a spirit box in case a spirit wishes to speak. So I'm just going to pop this in a reverse sweep. So how are you feeling at the moment, Maria? A little bit lightheaded mm -hmm. and a bit of a cold feeling around my shoulders. Which shoulder? OK, so where about are you feeling this cold? Here and here, around All right. my shoulders. So it's really strange, and I don't want to scare you, but the SLS is currently actually mapping in a figure stood right next to you. And it's mapping in exactly where you're feeling that cold spot. Oh, that is awesome. That's very interesting. So I'm going to ask the person that stood next to Maria, could you place a hand on her shoulder? Oh, there's two. There's now two of them and it's right on your shoulder. That is amazing. If the camera was static, so on a tripod, it would probably get a better reading, but as, as MJ is holding it um, and slightly moving, the camera's automatically always tracking, always calibrating. So it could pick up on what looks like figures by just using the shape of the wallpaper, the shape of the wall, the shape of ornaments that are around them. Hello. Can you speak to me? They really seem drawn to you. It's now mapping in on one on either side of you. This is incredible. What the hell was that? OK, that was a really strange bang. OK. What's happened over there? Am I... What's happened? It's just crazy. I actually feel like I'm, I'm there on the investigation. It's awesome. Concerned that a spirit seems desperate to get their attention, MJ focuses the SLS camera in the direction of the loud bang. OK, it's tracking a figure behind the bar where that noise came from. Oh, look at it. It's up on the bar counter. Could you see the stick figure there? Yeah. So it's tracking something stood on top of the bar, and it's a small figure. Somebody being uh, there it is. mischievous. Yes, up in the corner there, on top of the bar. Somebody must have been having a good night. Have a look at that. It's 
seems like a smaller figure. What on earth? It's moving across the ceiling? I've never seen that do that before. It's gone again. Having been alerted to the bar area by the loud bang, suddenly something more alarming comes to light. What's wrong? Are you hearing something? Oh my gosh, okay, there's quite a bit of water under here. This is potentially really dangerous. Yeah. You've got all your wiring back here. Potentially cause a fire if Absolutely. anything had to spark. The noise that we heard behind the bar and the figure that mapped in on the Kinect camera, everything was drawing our attention to this area of the bar. That is unbelievable. That actually happens quite a bit where a spirit will give you a message, and that's about the only way they can do it is to try to draw you over to that area. I, myself, would have been quite happy with that piece of evidence if I'd caught that on camera. This could have been really catastrophic. I mean, if we didn't discover this and we can do something about it, mm -hmm. you could potentially have had a fire and this whole place could have been up in flames. The paranormal is defined as an event or experience that is beyond normal explanation. In 2015, in New York, USA, this chilling footage was captured by a guest in a hotel during a storm. The building was deserted and is eerily silent, leading to speculation that what they experienced was in fact paranormal activity. I was expecting something to jump out on me again. It's very kind of reminiscent of The Shining. This is going to get under your skin and you're going to think, oh, God, it's The Shining, and the two little girls are going to emerge out of nowhere. It is true that ghost spirits give off a, a real high electromagnetic field. That's what we all, all believe in, all those paranormal investigators. So. Can they affect the electrics in a building? Yes, they can, definitely. It's like an optical illusion going on, to be honest. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's paranormal. It's definitely not normal, but you know, is, it, is it a ghost? Is it a haunting? No. I just saw dodgy electrics, sorry. In Pontefract in the UK, a suburban house is believed to have been the site of unprecedented levels of paranormal activity since the late 60s. After hearing the stories, current owner Bill opened its doors to teams of investigators in the hope of gathering undeniable proof. There was a photograph taken that I think is easily one of the most extraordinary paranormal photos I have ever seen. In 2015, two investigators spent one night in the property I have spoken to the girl that took the picture. She came with a friend, and they had um, one camera. It's a full-spectrum camera. And they went upstairs, and they sat on the bed. There's been some incredible things that have happened in that room. And so to sit in that room in pitch black on your own in 30 Drive. I mean, I wouldn't do that. They're very brave girls. The investigators started taking photographs in the dark, unaware they were not alone. They were just taking random photos in and around the room, but the most obvious place to photograph is down the corridor, looking at the bathroom. They downloaded the images, and this picture was the one photo that they took of what appears to be a girl in a cotton-style dress. And she's looking straight at the girl sat on the bed. I recognized the location straight away. I can see the edge of the door, I can see the top of the stairs, and I can see roughly how high or how tall 
this character was. We call her Emma, and she regularly makes her presence felt. I promise you that no one's done anything to create that image. It is real and it's fantastic. It clearly looks like a girl in a dress. It's very pixelated. It's the only thing I would say is that, you know, are, are we perceiving it to be a girl in a dress because the house has got this reputation of being one of the most haunted in Britain. So do our brains automatically go, that's a girl in a dress? It's not 100% that that is the case. I can see something. The thing with ghosts, we're told from a young age in, in all cultures that spirit plays a part in your, in your life on Earth. Our ancestors and ancestors all over the world, their decisions were, were made by the spirits. We've lost that now. A lot of evidence has been captured at 30 East Drive over the last five decades. But is it still possible to claim that it's the most haunted house in Britain today? Saying that this is something that's got a paranormal explanation in broad strokes actually kind of shuts down the conversation preemptively. Whereas if you keep your mind open to kind of natural explanations, I think there's really wonderful, exciting, rich questions that can continue to be asked about these kinds of experiences. Um, and you can approach these. A lot of people have personal experiences in there. Probably one of the most interesting pieces of footage would be the, the cupboard door opening by itself. Oh my God, I've got it on camera. I'm unconvinced and would I like to be proved wrong? Definitely, 100%. And I appreciate other people's stories of the house and what they would perceive to be evidence. I will always be interested in that kind of thing, but unless I'm there myself capturing my own evidence, I'm not going to believe this house is still haunted. In Henley and Arden, in the UK at the White Swan, MJ is coming to the end of a long night, investigating the supposed hauntings of the 16th century coaching inn. Alongside the belief that Virginia Black still resides in the property, a regular customer has led landlord Maria to believe that the spirit of a young girl may also be present. She said there's a presence of a little girl, Ellie, a little girl, apparently, that uh, is our little resident ghost in the restaurant. Determined to hunt for Ellie, MJ has brought out some equipment that might appeal to a child in the form of Rufus, who detects changes in the electromagnetic field. He's an EMF teddy bear. If anything or anyone comes up to Rufus, he's gonna light up. When I switch it on, you're gonna see the lights that light up. Yeah. So he's just oh gonna do that. Said... He's really bright. And we're gonna set up a recorder next to him. Because if we say to her, tell the teddy bear what your name is, Perhaps we can capture her voice on the recorder. So I'm just gonna put them over there. Digital recorders can record frequencies much lower, much higher than the human ear can hear. So after playing it back, you find that you have voices or unexplained noises. Uh, it's probably my favorite thing to use on an investigation. Ellie, are you here? Come and say hi to the bear. Look what we've got. We've got a teddy bear, Ellie. Are you looking for your mum? And I'm going to stop it and play this back. Let's see if we got anything. Are you looking for your mum? Yes. Yes. It's a yes. Oh, my God, it's a yes. It's really faint that it's there. EMF bear, brilliant. I like the way she's doing that to interact with the children as well. It's really intelligent. The power of suggestion is something that nobody is beyond. We, we are all, you know, capable of being influenced by the power of suggestion. Playing back recordings to people 
often people are primed and say, can you hear the word hello? So now I'm prepared to hear the word hello and my brain will scan that recording and pick out that, I, yes, I can. Rather than, I'd rather have it played to me and asked, can you hear anything? I'd probably go, mm, just sounds like noise. Let's play it one more time. Yes. There's de definitely something there. I don't know whether it says yes, it's definitely something. After a successful night and several pieces of compelling evidence, MJ decides to wrap up the investigation. Judging by the amount of activity we received during the investigation, as well as all the stories and the witness accounts, personally, do I think it's haunted? Yes. But do our experts agree? Awesome, absolutely awesome. The evidence captured really, really good stuff. That investigation was very impressive because of the use of all the technology and the responses with the technology. So when you get that scientific proof using the technology, that just goes a long way with validating that there is something paranormal going on there. It's difficult when you go into a location like that, your mind is already playing tricks with you. So you're going into this location thinking, all these horrific things have happened, all this dark past, dark history. But the evidence captured in a scientific way during that investigation is brilliant. And this is your typical haunted location. This has got everything you want as a paranormal investigator. And it intrigued me massively. I liked MJ's approach. She tried new techniques with the uh, spirit box. Edmund, wow, now I feel cold. And SLS, which is new in the field. What on earth, it's moving across the ceiling? I'll take that away as a very good investigation. I'll give that a thumbs up. Well done, MJ. For anyone who doesn't believe in the paranormal, I think that a lot of you have had experiences, but you don't know that you have. Sometimes it can be as subtle as a cold spot. You know, the hair on your neck standing up or getting the cold shiver down your spine. Have a look at those things and stop brushing them off. I guess if you're that steadfast in your belief, no one will change your mind but I can guarantee you've had experiences that you haven't even realized. Tonight, we investigate an evil entity in a suburban home. Present yourself to me. Uncover the truth about possession. Suddenly she was on fire. And I knew straight away I was dealing with a really bad energy. And analyze evidence of an unidentified flying object. It's a circle, that was a ball just a minute ago. Might, to sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behavior. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work. And some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. We're always going to be searching for answers hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. What the hell is going on there? Paranormal encounters have been reported across the globe for centuries. Whilst some might be a shock to the senses, most are harmless experiences. But occasionally, events of a more disturbing nature are documented. Possession of the human body is described as a condition where external forces physically take control. In 2018, in Singapore, the bizarre activity of a maid prompted the employer to check their CCTV. What they discovered has left them confused and worried. These videos crack me up, you know. I love that, look at that. <laughs> she looks very disturbed, very horror movie type, almost too horror movie type. 
It was very exorcist, very carry. I do believe that people can be possessed. To me, that looks like somebody just reenacting a scene out of a horror movie. Looks like they're having a fun Halloween party. The idea of possession takes form in different cultures. In the past, somebody having an epileptic fit would have been seen as being possessed and people would have explained it in that way. And I wonder if those stories get passed down and passed down and those narratives take on different meaning that a person can actually be possessed by a spirit. Across centuries and cultures, possession has been well documented and exorcism is the practice of evicting these negative entities who are trying to cause harm to the living. Unlike other paranormal topics, not many believe it is possible. And this has made Ralph Keaton one of the UK's most sought after exorcists. In 2018, in Yorkshire, England, Ralph was called in to deal with an extreme case by a young family fearing for their lives. Imagine moving into a brand new property. It's only been built six months. You move in with your partner and suddenly the house next door implodes. Now, I don't mean explodes outwards, I mean goes in on itself. Uh, so much so that the engineers that are working on that property can't figure out why it's done it. Ralph mostly operates as a medium, helping people to deal with paranormal activity. Only rarely does he have to perform exorcisms? I've developed over the years I've been working uh, what I call a malevolent risk category. And they go from one to four. Four is your average every run of the mill daily ghost. Poltergeist, for instance, basically things happening around you. Category three basically runs into objects flying towards you. Category two is if it's physical harm to you. You get cut, you get hit, you get thrown. Category one, is incredibly rare. They're at the top end and that, that's life dangering. This particular case is what I call a category one. It's right at the top end of something you don't ever want to get involved in. Ralph was called in to help when all other options had been exhausted. I took all the keys off them. I took the keys off anybody else. We didn't tell the neighbors too much and we locked the doors. I left it for two days, walked back in and I promise you it looked like somebody burgled the place. Everything was tipped upside down. Chairs, doors were ripped off, radiates pulled off the walls. I would have had the house rigged up with cameras. If you're gonna take the keys off people and you're gonna say, you know, let's, let's see what happens, and then you only come back with a photo of something ripped off a wall and the chair stacked up on another chair and so on and so forth, that's not ev enough evidence for me. The worst scenario was little baby in a cot, fire, cut, the cot sets on fire. So we have to get the baby out quickly. She's got a set of louvered lines, though they set on fire. And it then led up to her herself, the girl I was dealing with, standing in front of me and she said, we were in the kitchen and she said to me, can I make a cup of tea? And I said, yeah, go and make me a cup of tea. She turned around and walked away from me and I saw a small flame from the floor leap straight onto her leg. And then the next minute, a whole leg went blue, blue flame, all the way up her. And suddenly she was on fire. And I knew straight away I was dealing with a really bad energy. I do not have an explanation for that. I'm not even going to pretend to have an explanation for that. This has always fascinated me. Spontaneous human combustion. For a person to suddenly self-combust is, is just crazy. You know, if there's no fire underneath or there's no source, why? Why would that happen? I certainly don't have an answer. I'm sure those people don't have an answer. It's terrifying stuff. Terrifying. I got other energies that I work with to come in. Luckily for me, these things dealt with it and we've got rid of it. Seeing somebody on fire in front of you has changed my whole perspective on things. But it's also angered me enough to sort of now realise that that can't happen again, that's never going to happen again. If somebody is doing an exorcism on someone who has been suffering so much and going through internal struggles and is manifesting in their behavior and somebody comes along and says, I can remove that from you, that may cause that person gr a great sense of relief and release. You could say that is psychologically a very powerful tool. Malicious paranormal encounters are rare and the reason they happen is not widely understood. In Middlesbrough, in the northeast of England, 
Another family home is also suspected of housing harmful entities. Rose Fox was just seven years old when her family moved into the property. The activity she experienced was so extreme, she now refers to her childhood home as Hell's House. It looks so welcoming, looks lovely with all the palms and everything. But as soon as you walk through the gates, it hits you. It's like a brick wall. The first three days I was here, I woke up, and I remember it was six o'clock in the morning, and I saw a full manifestation at the side of the wardrobe of a man who had a hat on, a pair of glasses, he had a suit on, he had a walking stick, and he was staring right at me. This was just the beginning of many terrifying encounters for young Rose. More and more frequently, I used to, st I used to feel something on the bed ripping the sheets off my bed, and I used to try and hold the sheets. And you used to hear it walking around the bed. And that went on for a long time. I've also been strangled by this thing. Literally, I've been slapped by it. My life in this house from the age of seven years old was murder. You can tell there's genuine concern there. She's almost scared of what might happen next. She's lived in that house since she was a little girl. Now, if you think about children, they are highly imaginative, highly creative, open to learning, open to suggestion and wonder. That is the space that children live in. She may have thought she'd seen something and never said it to anyone and given it meaning, and it might have just grown up alongside her in her imagination. At the age of 21, Rose moved out of Hell's house, away from her childhood nightmare. But when her mother fell ill, Rose had no choice but to return to the property, along with husband Kevin. One day I had a very unforgettable experience, and I remember waking up at about, at about three o'clock in the morning. Something turned me open, my eyes opened my eyes, and I saw this long, this really long hand but his finger really got me. His finger was about 12 inches long and it was pointing straight in my eye like this. And I thought, what the hell was that? It could have been the perspective of the finger, obviously looking a lot longer than what it was, um, but the fact that he's actually seen a physical hand pointing at him for what reason, I do not know. I mean, it may not like the fact that he's coming to the family home and it's sort of, you know, I ain't said nothing, but that's like, get out. I think it is possible there's a risk of fictional contagion across different people's stories. And this can be even more of an issue, potentially, when it's somebody that you really care about. This is a story that obviously has a lot of meaning for his partner, so it's gonna be something that he's more inclined to take seriously, and it's going to be potentially something that's going to color what his experiences are. Despite witnessing terrifying events within the house, Rose has never been able to capture proof of anything paranormal herself. So she invited local paranormal investigators to the property to see if they could capture something. The team stayed in Hell's house overnight. They brought along an SLS camera, which maps in shapes when the infrared beams it emits are interrupted. And in Rose's childhood bedroom, they were able to capture this. Oh, it, there's one on the bed right next to you, Marie, and there's one dancing on the bottom of the bed. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's come out of the corner. It's, well, one of them has actually stood on you. It does seem to be mapping in. One looks actually quite like a child. I mean, if you look at the, the different sizes of the figures, that's definitely interesting. It's, it's stood right on your stomach. I like to see the scientific side of it. If something was caught on CCTV or something like that, I'd, I'd probably, if I were them, I would set something like that up in the house to have that more firm evidence. While the evidence is interesting, nothing irrefutable has so far been captured. After hearing such strong eyewitness testimony from Rose, we sent seasoned investigator Danny Moss into Hell's house. Equipped with the latest technology, in search of some concrete proof. A Rose's childhood home, very, very interesting location. I want to get in there myself and really try and provoke 
what is going on in there. But if any of the stories are true, then we could be dealing with a real serious problem here. Is there a heaven? I don't know. Is there a hell? I don't know. But I do know that for some reason, spirits stay on this plane and they're in my house. Paranormal activity is not simply confined to encounters on Earth. It's also used to describe what happens up above in our skies. One of the first documented sightings of an unidentified flying object was in 1947 in America. Since then, eyewitness testimony has increased exponentially. In 2017, on the outskirts of Bristol, England, two friends witnessed a curious bright light in the sky. Describing it as a ring of blue fire, they believe it's a UFO. It's mud, isn't it? Well, where'd that go? <laughs> no, it's a circle. Are they outside? I can't even tell where they are. I would be saying, is it a reflection of a headlight or is it, you know, some kind of star? But then, boom, turns into a circle. Well, you can still see a flash in there. The circle, no? that was a ball just a minute ago, wasn't it? Yeah, what the f We have an expectation of what a UFO might look like. To me, that's just an un unidentified object. I don't know what that is. You can discount Chinese lanterns because they're more of a flame. I'm no, no expert in, in space, but I wouldn't say a meteor would come down with that hollow looking circle. Does a light in the sky equate to some sort of otherworldly intelligence directly? I would question the steps that it takes to get there. I think there's a number of things that need to happen before you can come to that conclusion definitively. Supernatural activity might be seen or heard, but the most exciting encounters are when spirits appear to interact with the living. The exorcist Ralph Keaton is well known for making physical contact with the afterlife. In 2004, in Chester in the UK, Ralph hosted a paranormal event at Stanley Palace. It was on this night that Ralph's group of enthusiasts believe they experienced poltergeist activity. One of them a group wanted to do table tipping. It's just something that's a bit of a phenomenon. It's a round table and it has three legs on the base. Table tipping is a type of seance in which participants gather around a table, place their hands on it and wait for paranormal movement. The one thing I said to them all is, don't press, you just put your hands on it and if you feel like somebody else is causing you issues, you talk to each other. But we put four people on this table that didn't know each other. And sure enough, the table started to tip. And it started to tip backwards and forwards. Eventually, if you imagine it's pivoted on two legs and the one leg went in the air and it clipped onto the stairs. Then the next minute, it starts swinging its legs around and starts walking up the stairs. Take it up, take it up, Jack. <laughs> oh, my God. It's... Oh, my God. He's wedging it behind that. When you watch the footage, you will see the group arguing at each other over who is doing what. And you'll also see the group lifting their hands off it and the table's still rocking. Oh, Jack, can you? Can you go to the table, Jack? Can you? He's wet, don't you? You'll also see the table at one point, it moves on its own and you see everybody's hands are still here and they follow it. Oh my God! Oh my God! Is that you? Is it Tim? Is it Tim? Wow, first off, kudos to him for whoever filmed it because you can see their hands are not on the edges of the table. Nobody's pushing it. If I hadn't experienced something very similar myself, I would have said that as nonsense first. It started with really subtle movements, and I was a bit like, hmm, don't know what to make of this. But soon, it started literally walking the table around the room. I have no explanation for it. So, seeing this clip, it doesn't surprise me. 
While paranormal experiences might be exhilarating for some, they might also be frightening to others. In Middlesbrough, in the northeast of England, Rose has always perceived the entities that she believes exist in her childhood home as negative. Paranormal investigator Danny Moss is ready to begin his investigation at Hell's House and is hoping his unorthodox techniques will attract attention. I consider myself quite different to most paranormal investigators out there where a lot of people like to be calm in their approach, they like to sit and wait patiently. I'm one for provoking. According to Rose, the spirits could appear anywhere in Hell's house. Danny decides to start with the living room. Okay, what I'm gonna do, guys, is do an S-Box session, similar to the SB7 spirit box, okay? Except the difference with this, it doesn't pick up on any radio confliction. So the S-Box is a brand new design that has come straight from America. The unique thing about this is that it can jam the frequency. So if it was picking up on a voice or a noise in the atmosphere, it will sense that coming through, jam the frequency to allow more clarity to anything that does come through. Now, in previous investigations, I have had incredible evidence through this device, okay? So I want to put this right in the middle of the table and see if we can get anything coming in, all right? Okay, guys, you can hear the white noise, yeah? We are looking for anything that may possibly come through that white noise. Now, if there is anything in the atmosphere, in this room, it will come through that, I guarantee it. Present yourself to me. Present yourself to this man here. Where are you? When you're in the field, you must not, first of all, have aggression because you don't know if you are dealing with any entities and you are showing aggression or any form of aggression, expect it back. I keep thinking now, I'm seeing that curtain move, but I'm not sure. Speak to me now! I want it. What the hell was that? Did you hear that? What did that say? Speak again! Speak again, let me hear you! I see you. Holy shit! Did you hear that? That's pretty cool. I'm kind of surprised, though, it answered him, because if somebody was shouting at me like that, I'd be like, hmm. No way, I'm not talking to you. But that's, there's definitely something responding. I want to. And that seems like a really clear male voice to me. Speak to me now! I want to. The other response that I'm hearing is, I see you, which is quite clear. Speak again, let me hear you! I see you. Holy shit! Whether it's a conscious response to what he's asking, I'm not sure, because I couldn't quite clearly hear what the response was. But I think there is some kind of energy there. It is the same voice, which is what's really interesting to me. If it's scanning through those frequencies so quickly, you're not gonna have the same voice directly after each other, unless it is an entity trying to communicate with you. Upon closer examination, it seems as though the electronic voice phenomena captured might be directed at Rose. I want her. I see you. It wants me. I've always said that. And my husband, Kevin, will tell you it wants me. He's picked me up off the floor when I've been punched and he's had to drag me out of the house. But it wants me. It wants me, body and soul. But suddenly, the investigation takes an even darker turn as the energy in the room seems to be targeting Kevin. You got a pain in your neck? Yeah, a little bit of pain in the neck, yeah. Right, to see you? Yeah. See you, here, here. Yeah. Has Danny's provocative approach angered whoever was trying to make contact? Although advancements in technology have created more sophisticated ways to capture paranormal events, investigative teams across the world have been relying on cameras to document their findings for decades. In an unknown location in America, Two novice investigators were monitoring outside activity at a reportedly haunted site when they believe they witnessed an apparition 
rise up from the ground. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Dude, the arm, the arm here, there's stick up too much of them. Oh, that's a trap. Wait. The corner? Yeah, just have it. Okay. I thought I saw some right in that corner, right there. Dude! I, I can't even make head or tail of what I'm looking at. Dude, I do not want to be here. Yeah. I do not want to be here. That is freaking me out, man. I feel like I'm being directed to expect something frightening. The guys I can hear sound terrified. Oh, Did you see God. that? Yes. Dude, where'd it go? Right out of the ground, straight up. Dude. That yeah. was not a cat. That was not a bird. It could be moisture in the air. It could be that it is really cold where they are, and it's just the guy behind the camera, his breath. I have actually witnessed several different occasions something very similar, sort of a spirit mist. And it seems to be it's sort of the beginning of a manifestation, as though it doesn't have quite enough energy to manifest into a full-bodied apparition. Stop, get, get. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. They've set the scene, they're primed, and if you're, if you're open to the suggestion that there is some kind of ghostly activity, that's what you'll see. That's really interesting. And in my opinion, could that be some form of a spirit energy? Yeah, I'd say they captured a good one there. Investigators believe that hauntings can either be intelligent, where a spirit can interact, or residual, where the echo of a long past person remains, as the energy can't dissipate. In 2016, in Nottingham, England, Paranormal investigator Tony Ferguson believes he may have captured residual energy when filming in the caves beneath the city. As I walked into Nottingham Caves, you walk in through two what are called different realities, our reality and tra traveling back in time. The moment I walked down the stairs, um, I did a bit of calling out just to see if there's anything around that particular area. And the moment I did, within about a minute or so, th these curtains just started moving on their own. So I pulled the curtains round, just to have a little peek round, just to see if there's anyone there. But it's just a, just a dead end wall. We then moved off from that point to the middle part of the caves, and a lot of the caves there are inaccessible. So I started putting the camera down in different angles, just to sort of see what's going on in parts of the caves that are not accessible. We were doing a bit of calling out, and the smell of rotten flesh just suddenly appeared. Literally, as that happened, I turned around and saw this apparition just shoot past. It's like a whoosh, really quickly. And as I've turned around back onto facing over this part where people can't access, you just see this figure over seven feet tall suddenly just walking past, holding a lantern. If there's any spirits here at all? I just couldn't get over the mere size. It's wearing like a dark robe, it has a facial feature to it, but it's almost like its head's hunching down like that. And you just see it just literally uh, walk across this platform, what's not accessible, and then walk straight through a wall. I see a light very slowly moving across the top, but just a little pinprick, and then you see, an, I'm seeing another one underneath it. So it looks like, it does look like there's somebody walking across there. What's really good is as it moves across the grills, you almost see the figure as well, a full-bodied figure move with the lantern, uh, which is really good. So it's not just a light anomaly. You've also almost got a bit of a mass there to go with it. I think that's a really good bit of footage. Now, I can't debunk it myself just yet. It seems to be quite genuine. I think that's a great capture. The fact that you can kind of make out that there's a bit of a figure and you can see the light from the lantern and the way it's sort of moving, as though it was hanging, it's really interesting. Investigative teams across the world all strive to record paranormal evidence on camera, but some activity is harder to capture, as not all encounters are visual. In more extreme cases, they can be physical. In Middlesbrough in the UK, Rose and Kevin have both experienced what they believe to be direct poltergeist activity. 
I used to sit down in the living room and uh, there's a special chair which your mother used to sit on. But I started sitting on that chair. I can remember getting sharp pains in my neck. <laughs> Every time I sat on this chair, I started getting these pains. During the investigation, Kevin believes he might have been physically manipulated by the spirits that Danny has provoked. What I'm going to do, because you're feeling that, I'm going to put the SLS camera on you, OK? Structured light sensor camera, OK? Now, what this does is it basically maps figures in a skeletal form. So if I was to point this at you, it would map your skeletal form, OK? Now, it's believed to be able to track spirits as well, OK? So I'm going to arm that now. Kevin, just stay there for me, OK? You all right, Kev, yeah? Yeah, I'm all right. I just feel like there's sorts of waves in my body at the moment, but I can grin and bear it. It's not a painful, but you can feel something's building. And you said it moves around this back area of the room, yeah? I, I saw, like, a black thing that moved around Kevin. Um, it moves around the curtains, it moves around here. Can you ask them to come and stand behind you, please? If there's any spirits here, will you come and stand behind me? Just point to the curtain. This one behind you. Ask them to come and stand right by your hand. Come stand right by my hand. Do as he asks. Oh, my days, there's a figure. Oh, my God, Kev, right where you're pointing, there is a figure stood right there. I swear to God, there is a figure stood there. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Show yourself again. Thank you. Can you point to Kevin? Can you point to this gentleman sat down? It's pointing up. It's pointing upstairs. It was stood right there. It disappeared. It came back and it started pointing up above us. I love that on command. It doesn't get any better than that. If you can say, come where he's at, and it shows up, that it doesn't really get much better than that. Once you start dealing with fear and the emotionality, that's going to further color the kind of perceptual experience that you have, potentially. He's asked a question and uh, on command, uh, he, you know, he's got a response with the SLS, which, yeah, is still tried and tested in the field. Yes, it does show a stick figure of what you would interpret to be a human form, which is, you know, impressive. What's interesting about it is that it's in a specific area that he is asking this spirit to stand and having that figure map in, having it disappear and then asking for it to come back and then seeing it again. Could it be a fluke? Possibly. What's above? Is it telling us to go upstairs? Guys, I think we need to move upstairs. The figure there pointing upstairs is telling us to go upstairs. No, we'll go back up downstairs. And I think we should listen. Today, cameras are used to record more and more aspects of our daily lives. And this has resulted in many brief encounters with the spirit world being accidentally captured. In 2017, in Thailand, a group of motocross riders believe they might have captured a fleeting appearance of an ancient Thai woman. This evidence was filmed on one of the riders' helmet cameras whilst traveling through the woods. Are we talking about that thing on the right-hand side by the trunk? Because I see that. Trained eye. <laughs> I didn't see it the first time through. When they slowed it down, that's when I saw it. So I don't know what that is. The brain works in, in very different ways. If we look at clouds, we can sit there and go, oh, look, there's a dragon, there's a unicorn. Your brain makes sense of things. So when I look at that, I go, it's trees and leaves. I mean, it could be reflection of light hitting the lens, causing an optical illusion. Why would it appear in the woods? I suppose if they're going through on motorbikes, creating a load of ruckus noise, you know, going through this sort of entity appears if, say, like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Do you know what I mean?
Some locations have such gruesome pasts, it seems almost inevitable that paranormal activity would occur. Bodmin Jail in Cornwall in the UK was built in 1778. It was notorious for executing its prisoners by public hangings. Although the jail closed in 1927, it seems some of its former residents never left. I've heard people's stories of where they've walked in and come out crying because they've picked up on someone else's energy. There's just a lot of anger, upset, emotion. It's just an emotional place. You just walk in there and you know that this place has had a lot of bad things taking place there in the past. Investigator Tony Ferguson has visited many haunted locations, but believes the evidence he captured at Bodmin Jail is undeniable proof of the paranormal. The moment we got in there, um, I felt like a pressure on my chest. I knew that there was something there. Started doing a bit of calling out, trying to sort of build some energy in the building. My other half came downstairs with me after a while. We started reading up plaques. And there was this one particular character that killed a horse. Um, his name was William. And so I read out the plaque and said, William, are you here? The lights just went dark. I've turned round and it's pitch black and my camera's not picking up the end of the corridor. I could see a figure down there, but the camera never picked it up. I've put the camera down on the actual side. I always leave cameras lying around because you never know what you capture. Within two minutes of doing that, this apparition that I um, saw earlier walked past. It was only when Tony reviewed his footage did he see for himself the apparition he caught on camera. I just see this figure in dark clothing, old style clothing. It's not something people would be wearing in this day and age. It was, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. I was locked in Bodmin Jail for two 12-hour investigations and had quite possibly one of the most terrifying experiences in all my years of investigating the paranormal in that very same spot as that apparition is captured. It is definitely a really interesting clip. The movement, the height of the figure, everything seems very familiar to me because of my experience. Say you see a manifestation of an entire person, is that thing necessarily a ghost is still an open question. Like what the content of that thing that you're seeing is, there is still a lot of things to be answered about that, even if you have the perceptual experience of seeing a thing. I'm quite impressed with what, what he's actually caught here. And I know the prison. I would put that in top five of the most haunted places in the UK. Reports of paranormal activity are not exclusive to old buildings steeped in history. Modern residential properties also appear to stage many unexplainable encounters. In Middlesbrough, in the UK, the investigation at Hell's House has started to gain momentum. Investigator Danny Moss believes the spirits are directing them to Rose's childhood bedroom. Reluctantly, she agrees to move upstairs. This bedroom here was my first room. And as time was going on, every single night, something was happening in the room. And it always happened after 12 o'clock. I used to hear a dog that used to bark outside the gate. So I knew when that dog barked, something was coming into the room. Before Danny can even set up his equipment, Rose hears something in the hallway. I can hear you. It sounds like a, a bloke mumbling. There, there was a noise confliction outside. There just wasn't a minute that. Ago. I can use that. I tell them the difference between the car and people outside. It was a low grumbling. Growing up, Rose had also witnessed a strange human like figure bending backwards and walking towards her in a crab like manner at the top of the stairs. Okay, Rose, I'm going to put this down, all right? What this does is measure sudden sharp five degree or more temperature drops or rises, okay? I'm gonna put that right where you said then, okay? Right there. Hello? Can you pass me that prayer sheet, please? Now, there is a prayer in the master's bedroom that Rose is very cautious of. I thought it may be a useful experiment to try to attempt to gain evidence and see if we can provoke something by reading it out. I'm not going anywhere near you. St. Michael the Archangel, 
Defend us in battle. Be our protection. As Danny reads the prayer, Rose is very nervous. We had the house blessed again before Christmas. The priest came round and blessed the whole of this house. And he said he did a special blessing with salt. And it made it worse. More attacks. I got sucker punched. So we don't pray in this house. What does this mean? I read this earlier. Did it offend you? Oh, my days. Right on cue. <laughs> That's a serious, serious drop in temperature. You can feel it. Put your hand here. I, no, put I your can hand... feel it. I can feel it here. Kev, put your hand here. I don't, I don't want to what's it. Yeah. Feel that, how feel cold it. that is? Yeah, I can. Yeah. OK, guys, what I'm going to do now is put the SLS camera back on. Obviously, we mapped the figure that pointed up here from downstairs. I'm going to see if we can try and map something in this hallway. OK, the temperature pod's obviously just gone off. Rose, you said you saw something out there. I'm going to try and map it on here now. Is there anyone in this hallway? Oh, my word. Oh, my God, what is that doing? Did you see that, Kev? What was it? Do you know you said to me that there was a crab-like figure? Yeah. That has just come up on here. I swear to you, that has just come up on here. Kev, did you see yeah, that? Yeah, I saw it, yeah. Literally, Rose, a crab-like figure just come across the banister, move to the side and move down. I don't want to see no crab figure. That was not human. I swear to God, that was not human. I've never seen anything like that on an SLS camera before, ever. I've only ever seen an SLS camera map something in like that once before. And it is really strange because it doesn't seem to move in any sort of humanoid way. The SLS, along with the fact that the equipment went off right after he mentioned the prayer did offend him, I would say that it was probably not a, a fluke that it happened. On one hand, you've got a machine that seems like it's desperately trying to interpret a figure from the light and the shadow. And then you've got people that are trying to interpret the interpretation of the machine into something that corresponds with, I think, a demon crab. Do you know you said to me there was a crab-like figure? Yeah. That has just come up on here. I swear to you, that has just come up on here. The alternative explanation is that the machine is trying and failing to create a human figure. You all right? <laughs> yeah. You OK? Yeah, fine. We won't be. We won't be able to bloody sleep again. There's something else to worry about. Man. No, but I've already seen it with my eyes anyway. In that living room, I saw it moving like a crab. I honestly don't believe we are dealing with a normal haunt in here. After an intense evening of unexplainable encounters, Danny decides to bring the investigation to a close. I'm always quite wary of deeming somewhere to be haunted or not. What I can say is that the evidence that I've captured, I do not believe can be scientifically explained. Speak to me now! I want it. What the hell was that? What came through the S-Box is, is undeniable evidence for me because of my past experiences. I know how the device works. I know what it does. I'm more nervous now knowing that everything that we've seen and experienced in this house, somebody else has seen. The more investigation we do, we'll get a better understanding what is here. Yeah, it'll give us a better peace of mind, I think. I'd be really excited to investigate this location purely because of S-Box responses that Danny received. This is two very clear voices. You can clearly hear that I want you and I see you. I want her. I see you. And it's the same voice, and that gets me excited. Even if somebody had come in and been like, hey, these are random noises, here's all the reasons physically, like, why this has all these other explanations that seem more plausible than malevolent spirit entities. Even if she was confronted with all of that information, once you're holding on to these beliefs for a period of time, it's very, very difficult to change your opinion about these things. I think Rose as a subject 
is what's got the haunting, what's got the ghosts or the energy around it, rather than the location. And I think if we looked into it a little bit more, we might be able to see that this energy that's trying to get in touch with Rose might not be as evil and demonic as they think it is. The communication might have gotten more negative just because they're trying so hard to, to say something. I hate to leap to it being negative or I hate to leap to it being a, a demon, but I wouldn't stay around, even if it wasn't meant to be negative. No way. Would I ever come back and live in this house? No. I also wouldn't sell this property to another family because I wouldn't want another child to go through what I went through. Non-believers, skeptic, talk to my husband because he was just like you. He didn't believe in anything. He didn't think ghosts exist. He didn't think ghosts could hurt you. Come stay a week in this house and see if you're a skeptic at the end of it. I doubt it. Tonight, we investigate a museum full of haunted artifacts. That is terrifying. Evaluate evidence from an abandoned asylum. We couldn't see anything at the time. We got home and we saw the shadow. And we search for UFOs in Norway. We still haven't got an answer to what this phenomenon is. To sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behavior. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work. And some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. I am on the lookout for undeniable proof. All hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. What the hell is going on there? In the paranormal world, apparitions are believed to be residual energy that a person leaves behind when they have passed on. But sightings are often fleeting and very rare. So in Devon, in the UK, in 2018, when a mother was filming her young son riding his bike in the grounds of a 19th century mansion, she was shocked to discover she wasn't the only one watching over him. We didn't see anything at first. I don't know what that is. It looks like a... Do you know what I've... <laughs> That's Queen Victoria <laughs> in a sash. That is a really, really good capture. However, you would need to look at the background scenario. Where are they? What's supposed to be in that window? Is there something in that window that is there genuinely? A mannequin, a drape, make it look like someone is looking out the window. It could all be completely rigged and somebody in Victorian costume up there, but it could be real. In search of the truth, teams of investigators around the world equip themselves with the latest technology and head off into the unknown. In Colville, in the UK, in 2018, a team of investigators began to explore the old house, a location dating back to medieval times that is renowned for its dark past. It's a fascinating building and um... It's, it's a hot spot, really, for a lot of paranormal investigators. The most compelling story that's associated with this property is the story that the house owner murdered his wife and his children and his mistress. Those are the people that are supposed to be still here now in this property that haunt it. We decided to investigate the front room, the old parlour room. The other members of the team were using other bits of equipment, started to call out. So we came around the seance table. The energy that was coming through was really quite strong. So I asked one of the girls to get the FLIR camera. FLIR stands for Forward Looking Infrared and uses thermal imaging technology. 
So I couldn't believe what I was actually looking at. There was a face in the camera looking back at us and there was no face on the other side. The, the face was actually in the camera and as we panned round, the face moved with the camera and it, it was just looking back at us. It's a face. Who are you? Oh, I'm shaking. Let me see. Jesus wept. It's not, you, Is that it's the not guy that's walking around? That's it's not defined now, it's not face. moving though, it's not moving, guys. I see a face, I'm sure that 90% of the public will see a face and 10% will argue that it's, you know, a fingerprint on the lens. But that remains blue, which means it's cold. And behind it, you can see all the other variables in temperature. That remains blue. That was a very cold, very obvious face. That was just amazing. I can't think of any way somebody could fake that. It totally blew us all away, and it's been one of the best pieces of evidence that we've ever captured. And Jane is not the only investigator to capture compelling evidence on camera at the old house. Premises officer Mark, who works in the property daily, also believes he captured the inexplicable in 2018. Before we began the investigation, we decided to shoot a small intro tape on this floor of the attic. As I was walking in just through here, talking to the camera, the door just slammed unexpectedly. What's that? As soon as we heard it, I walked over to here and basically looked straight down the stairs and the door had closed. So this was the door. The way in which we left the door was about, it was about maybe four, maybe five inches. So it was about there. It takes quite a bit of force to actually make it shut on the hinge. You really have to actually push the door to close it. As Mark continued to film the door, much to his surprise, it closed again. There's just been no explanation whatsoever that I can think of that would have to shut it. Wind from other doors downstairs, like for instance, the back door sometimes creates a draft that comes through here, but this does not move at all. They make the effort to go and try and make it happen again, which is what any good investigator would do. You see how much force he has to put in to actually close the door. Slamming doors sometimes could be anything. I'm a little skeptical, but I'm going a little more towards, yeah, something's going on there. I'd like to see them do some lopped off cameras on it, maybe in a couple different angles. I would say that's legit. I've, I've seen stuff like that happen before. And then obviously when there's nobody there, you're in for a nasty shock. Spirits are not only believed to form attachments to places, but also objects that have significant meaning for them. In Nottingham, in the UK, Steve and Marie have been collecting haunted objects for years. And after searching for a suitable location to display them, they found an abandoned picture house built on the grounds of a former asylum, which they also think is haunted. We actually drove past the building which was boarded up, trees hanging over it. Uh, and Marie turned around and says that that place looked amazing. It was actually going to be demolished. When we looked around it, it was pretty much within two weeks, we was inside the building. Everything was right, it had history, and it was an old picture house. And there's not many left that's original. It was when they were renovating the property that Marie experienced her first encounter. I was near the stairs. And I turned around and I thought a lady had wandered in off the street because there was a lady stood there in a white dress. I looked away, looked back, she had gone. And then I realised that the doors were actually locked and nobody could get in. I've heard bangs, I've heard screams, I've had things bang me on the back. We've had tools disappear. This place just keeps giving and giving. It's like a paranormal portal. I would have stayed here at night. No. As soon as they moved their haunted artefacts into the building, it became impossible to know how many spirits now reside inside its walls. 
The building itself, spirit-wise, we will never know. If we put it down to all the items and the spirits that are with the items or attached to any of the items, we'd be going into hundreds. I have first-hand experience of haunted items, so I am a big believer that certain items can act as conduits to spiritual energy. The fact that these guys have filled the location with these supposed haunted objects may have introduced something to the location that doesn't belong there, and that's when you're really delving into something that you shouldn't necessarily be messing around with. Having both experienced activity in the old picture house, they decided to try and capture evidence on camera. Pretty much every time we close, we put uh, motion sensor cameras around the building so we can actually capture anything that goes on around the night and for security purposes as well. We came back the next day, Steve collected all the cameras up, we opened the museum to the public. About an hour or so later, Steve shouted us over. He'd been going through the footage. He says, just watch the hearse. One of the haunted artefacts they have in the location is a hearse from the Victorian era. We actually couldn't believe what we saw. The handle is far too heavy for it to be a breeze or anything like that. We can't think of any reason why that handle would actually lift if it wasn't paranormal. That is very significant. I mean, the forces alone, to have poltergeist activity like that and to capture that, I would say I'm pretty impressed with that. And it would be very hard to debunk it. Of course, yeah, you can replicate it. Everyone knows you can get a piece of string, flip it up. I don't think these guys would do that. If somebody was doing that, how would you stop it to keep it from hitting the glass? It goes up and then it, you can see it stop and then go back. It's just, that, that's amazing footage. Look at the elements that are at play here. A hearse which would have carried dead people. A handle that suddenly moves. Therefore, it means that there's a spirit attached to it in some way. We need to make sense of things that normally don't make sense to us at all. That is why we imbue it with something much more powerful. I would say that it's definitely genuine poltergeist activity, caught on camera. As this one piece of evidence from the old picture house is so compelling, we've sent paranormal investigator MJ Dixon along to investigate further in the hope of capturing more proof. This is our famous auditorium and this is our Victorian hearse. This is where we caught the footage from one of our locked off cameras. We actually seen the handle actually lift up at speed go to about here, stop, which otherwise it would have gone straight through the glass if it wow. didn't stop, okay. because it just actually hit the glass, then come back down. That's really heavy. It's yeah. really heavy. So That's an amazing a, capture, guys. Yes. It's an amazing part of footage. The museum is quite a large location. It's got a real mysterious kind of ominous feel about it, and I'm hoping that Whoever's here will come out and investigate with us. But with so many spirits believed to be residing in the building, it's impossible to know who or what will make contact. Being in the right place at the right time is key to witnessing the paranormal. But these days, catching it on camera is even more important, as digital evidence is harder to dispute than something seen only by the naked eye. In 2008, at an undisclosed location in America, a team of paranormal investigators were called in to help a distressed family at the center of poltergeist activity. The evidence captured at their home led to the family moving out, never to return again. The 
the first thing that comes into my head, why? Why are we filming? What has caused you to film your swing at two o'clock in the morning? Unless it's CCTV footage, you know, that they're just filming their porch anyway, and it is actually genuine CCTV footage. But if it's something that someone's filmed, I'm always suspicious of these kind of videos. Your vision of what you're seeing is limited to this much. So you cannot see what's above, below, to the sides. You are being directed to look at a specific event. So in my mind watching this one, I just picture like another dude out of frame with just a pulley, just like. <laughs> on the hunt for ghosts and proof of their existence. The paranormal community will stop at nothing in their pursuit of evidence. In situations where most people would run away in fear, investigators relish the opportunity to gain access to locations with the most terrifying histories. Newsham Park Hospital in Liverpool in the UK has a reputation for being one of the most haunted locations in England today. Newsham Hospital started life as an orphanage in 1874. It closed in 1949 and reopened in 1954 as a mental asylum. Newsham Park Hospital was renowned for its psychiatric department, but it closed for good in 1997 and has been empty ever since. It was derelict and abandoned until somebody bought it, and then they found out that the place was haunted. Newsham Hospital is surrounded by so much dark history. Over the years, there's been abuse, torment, and torture that's taken place there, and this place is shrouded with this energy. Incredible place one of the most haunted places I've ever been to. The Naughty Boys corridor upstairs is a real hot spot for activity. It's incredible. There is a real dark, dark entity. You go into a building like this, which was known for being an asylum. It was an orphanage. It is now a crumbling building. It has all the props for telling a very seductive, compelling story about some otherworldly activity, some kind of negative energy. Despite the stories of its dark past, Sean and his team were excited to be able to explore this location for themselves. In July 2014, myself and an investigative team were given access to Newsham Asylum. And wow, you know, when we went in there, the experiences that we had personally before we'd even set up any of the equipment, they were crazy. We were just doing a quick recce. When we saw this apparition, it, it was uh, maybe five feet, six feet away from us. It started to appear as a hazy mist. We didn't know what it was. It was terrifying. It was just not what we expected to happen as we had entered the building. Undeterred, the team started to set up their equipment. In the corridor leading down to the kitchen, people have seen and reported shadow figures moving in and out of these rooms. So we thought it was best to set up a camera focusing straight down the corridor with a trigger object, a motion sensor. Now the purpose of the trigger object that we set on the floor, it was a teddy bear because it was a, a children's orphanage, then took a photograph. We managed to capture a face at the end of the corridor. There's nothing definitive about that picture. You can't make out what it is. We've got to be careful in this incident that we don't perceive what we want to see. You think, wow, haunted location, you capture what looks like a face. It's a ghost, it's a ghost. It is a very pixelated image, so is it 100% evidence? No, it's not. Is it interesting? Yes, it is, considering what actually lurks inside that location. For Sean and his team, though, the evidence is definitive proof. I could not believe my eyes. When I saw it, it sent instantaneous chills down the back of my neck because that is like the ultimate holy grail of evidence to capture a physical spirit person or the face of them. I was just so glad I didn't witness it with my own eyes because if I had, I think I would have just run out of there in terror. 
When paranormal activity is captured on camera, in order to validate its authenticity, further investigation is required to prove the evidence is beyond doubt. At the old picture house in Nottingham in the UK, MJ is preparing to investigate the Victorian hearse. The footage captured already shows the heavy handle lifting by itself, and MJ is curious to find out who or what made that happen. So we're going to open up the back and do some EVP? Yes. Perfect. God, you can actually smell, the, like, how old it smells. Yeah, you can smell the age. Yeah. Yeah. MJ is using a very sensitive digital recorder to try and capture electronic voice phenomena. And Steve is using an SLS camera, which is able to map in figures not seen by the naked eye when the infrared beams it emits are interrupted. The person that moved the handle up and down, if you could come and speak to us, there's a silver box on the top. Just talk really loudly into that for us. Were you carried? Were you in this hearse? What happened to you? We want to know your story, and we'd love to hear it from you. I wonder if we should play that back. Yes. Were you carried? Were you in this hearse? I was. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just got goosebumps. I think we need to play it one more time because that was quite a clear answer. Yep, I agree. So that's amazing. Were you carried or pulled in this hearse? I was. Yeah. I could hear I was because she did say it, but I do hear two, sil two syllables or two words and the pause between I would say they're two words, but I can't tell for sure what they are. Maybe it sounded different at the time, I don't know, but there's just there's no tone to the voice, there's no, there's no words to it, it's just noises. Certainly it's answering her in a way, but it's just not voice coming through. Well, I think possibly when you're surrounded by all these things, which some of them have what I imagine to be fantastic stories attached to them, if you're thinking about all these ghost stories, all these hauntings, all these things that could be paranormal in nature that are around you, then it's going to color things that happen, which might be otherwise neutral in other circumstances. It's been proven that objects have been haunted. I want to use the word possessed rather than haunted, because that's what you're, you're dealing with. It's a possession of a possession. And in the back of my mind, though, there'll be a little thing saying, just be careful, uh, because you really don't truly know what may be attached to it. Suddenly. Steve notices something on his SLS camera, standing next to MJ. Guys, yeah. there's actually a person in the picture beside of you. The picture next to us? Yes. You can see someone mapping in there? Yeah, there's somebody doing mapping there for about 20 seconds. About your height? Really? I have goosebumps from head to toe. Could this be the spirit that moved the hearse handle? To be defined as paranormal, an event must challenge logical or rational reasoning and can encompass anything that is beyond scientific explanation. In Hestelen, in Norway, light anomalies have been detected in one valley since the 1980s. Despite becoming the subject of much research, scientists are still no closer to understanding what these phenomena are leading to speculation that they might be extraterrestrial. It's actually been investigated for over 30 years, and we still haven't got an answer to what these light, this phenomena is. It's either some kind of energy field that is caused naturally by the Earth that we probably don't even know about. Or it could be paranormal. It could be something to do with extraterrestrial life. 
It's a very romantic idea that there could be something else out there. I think there's some issues with how does that relate specifically to the conclusions that you're drawing. Like, does a light in the sky equate to some sort of otherworldly intelligence directly? I would question the steps that it takes to get there. I think there's a number of things that need to happen before you can come to that conclusion definitively. I do think that there might be life on other planets. There's other solar systems and, you know, who knows? We're, we shouldn't be so arrogant to think we're the only ones out there. We're also arrogant to think they'd want to come in and study us too. <laughs> I won't admit to ever believing in UFOs. I was a member of the British UFO Research Association before UFOs was my passion. Still is. It is the thing that drives me as well. The Hastellan Lights, when I've looked at it and studied it, I've ruled out UFOs purely because they never land. No one ever comes out. <laughs> It's just lights. So we don't know whether it's an effect of the Earth and its own electromagnetic field doing this, reacting to the gases that are escaping uh, through uh, tectonic plates rubbing together. I mean, there's a lot of unexplained phenomena that's related to that kind of stuff. We don't know everything that goes on on this Earth. Newsham Park Hospital in Liverpool in the UK is notorious for paranormal activity. Today, the building is unsafe for anyone to enter, but in the past, teams of investigators have been fortunate enough to gain access. New to the world of paranormal research, Emma from Preston was lucky enough to visit the infamous building on her very first investigation. As you're driving up to Newsham Park Hospital, you can see it from a distance. It's a very old Victorian, oppressive-looking building. You just get that sense of eeriness. It screams ghosts at you. When I first entered Newsham Park Hospital, we were led into the Great Hall, and I can just remember just being in awe of the actual building itself. You can wander off down a corridor and go into a room and you end up in a hospital ward and they've still got the hospital beds up and the curtains. You wander further on down and you're into the asylum bit and they've still got the electronic shock machine in one of the rooms on the side. My first ever paranormal experience at Newsham Park Hospital was when we did a bit of table tapping um, and we did that in the hospital ward. There was people around the table with the fingers on the table keeping perfectly still, asking questions and you can hear tapping on the table. Yes. Thank you, that was, that was really absolutely good. brilliant. Can you do it again? Can you that do it loud? Absolutely amazing. Ah, yes, that's excellent. I'd look underneath the table and ask another question, and I could hear the tap again. And I just couldn't explain where the tap was coming from. Will you tap how, how old yeah. you are? One, two, two three, four. We're four. My face literally was right next to the tapping. There was nothing I could physically see with my eyes that was making the tapping, yet I could hear it as clear as day, and so could everybody else. You can clearly hear tapping on the table. You can clearly hear the tapping come back in response. What I will say is that without any camera footage, then it's easily debunked because it could be any number of guests sat around the table either doing it without being aware that they're doing it or clearly trying to fake it. For Emma, witnessing the event in person, this exciting evidence made her eager to investigate the location further. I'd gone there for a specific purpose to find out if paranormal did exist, if ghosts were existed. I wasn't going to step back from that. I, I was going to run towards that and go and see if I could find out if that was the case. In Nottingham in the UK, 
Paranormal investigator MJ Dixon is investigating the old picture house. She's already captured what she believes to be electronic voice phenomena, and a figure was detected on the SLS camera by Steve. MJ now wants to introduce a new piece of kit into the proceedings. The portal that we're using was built by Steve himself. And the reason I want to use this device here is because they've used it on numerous occasions and with good results. It seems that whatever's here communicating with them is used to this device. It is sweeping radio frequencies constantly, but the portal minimizes all static. So you don't have that constant white noise. You just have purely the voices coming through. MJ has separated herself from Marie and Steve. In the auditorium, they will call out to the spirits in the location, and MJ hopes they will answer through the portal. So that MJ has no knowledge of the questions they ask, communication is through walkie-talkies only. Guys, when you're ready. Can you tell MJ your name via the device? Oh my gosh, I thought that just said MJ. Can you touch MJ? Give her a push. I'm going to touch her, but be kind. But not so kind. <laughs> Big push will be good. Despite the playful nature of their request, the investigation starts to take a sinister turn. The feeling in here has gotten a bit more oppressive. <laughs> can't breathe. I was just going to say, I feel like I can't breathe, like something's around my neck. That made me feel a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> it felt like something touched the back of my head. Can you tell MJ where you are from, please? I'm right here. I'm right here. I heard that. Right, I'm going to ask a few questions of my own up here. Tell me how many spirits there are. Four. But yeah, I definitely heard four. I can't make out the other stuff that's coming through the portal, but um, can you tell me how many spirits there are? Four. When she asked how many spirits, I heard four. I'd be quite excited about that. If you are primed and looking for proof of the supernatural, that kit and your belief will equal some kind of narrative. And you will then attach that narrative to the history of the place, to the history of the objects, to what those objects may have carried with them, you know, the energy of previous owners. And it becomes a very emotional investment, but the kit gives it some kind of objective reality. But actually attached to that is a lot of storytelling and you're putting the two things together and saying, this is factually correct. After the physical encounter she experienced in this experiment. I feel like I can't breathe like something's around my neck. MJ now believes the spirits in this location may not be friendly. During the evening, I felt as though I was being negatively affected by whatever's here. A paranormal experience is often subjective, and although it can be felt, seen, or heard, capturing proof on camera eliminates the possibility of doubt. In 2018, in a suburban house in the south of Wales in the UK, this footage was captured one evening. The two friends are baffled by the activity they are witnessing. Could this be paranormal? Or is there a rational explanation? I can't watch now. What is it? <gasps> the curtain. Ah.
I think the cat's more confused than us. When cats stare at things, you gotta kinda wonder. I think it looks like there's a radiator right there, but radiators don't blow out heat, and it's obvious that the window isn't open. But they're kinda calm about it for it being their house, and I wouldn't be. Hmm, that fell a little bit strange. It seemed to look like it was attached to something because it, it was still sort of suspended as it was falling. If you're faking something, you're likely to do the, oh my God, oh my God, it's so bad. Oh, I'm so frightened. And they aren't. It just seems a little bit weird. Why have they got the camera? Why are they filming? There's probably a little bit of wine going around. <laughs> it's a Friday night. Let's m make a scary video. There is no excitement. Now, if that was me, I would be up jumping around, trying to find out what's going off, holding the lampshade still, probably swinging off it. There's nothing. Did you see that? Of course I did. I'm filming it. When presented with paranormal evidence, you can choose to believe, or you can remain skeptical and dismiss it. But having a personal experience, even for hardline skeptics, might change their perception of the supernatural forever. In Newsham Park Hospital, during her first ever paranormal investigation, Emma witnessed table tapping, but she was about to encounter something more chilling. We were walking towards the asylum, taking quite a lot of pictures in the dark. We couldn't see anything at the time, and it wasn't until we got home and we saw the shadow. Looking at this, it's a very dark anomaly. If I see this, I'd think, oh my God, I've got this shadow entity here. But the light on the wall, I thought to myself, hold on, is that the back of someone? And they're shining the torch on the wall in front of them, ready to make their way towards the door, which is open. I'm not saying that is the case, I'm just saying. It's a very good picture, and maybe it could be. You can see the colours in the background on the walls of the ward, yet the shadow itself stays completely black, no matter what we do to the picture. Any of the old asylums are interesting places. And from the way she was talking, she seemed really shocked that they found that. So I'd like to think that it's real. Before I did the investigation, I was very skeptical as to whether the paranormal and ghosts did exist. But when we went to Newsham and we caught the picture and we also caught the EVPs, the minute I walked out of that place, I was convinced then that something paranormal did exist. In Nottingham, at the old picture house, the investigation is continuing. They've already captured some EVP from the hearse, and MJ believes she may have communicated with a negative spirit. Can't breathe. I was just going to say, I feel like I can't breathe, like something's around my neck. In the past, Steve and Marie believe they have seen a shadow person in the attic. So, curious to find out who this might be, MJ decides to investigate. OK, so I think if we sit around here, guys, yeah, um, I would do some EVP up here because I want to try and communicate with the tall, dark shadow that manifested in here. Is there anyone else in this room with us? That was two. That was two whistles, like yeah. a... <whistles> if that was you whistling, could you make that noise again, please? Could you whistle again? MJ plays back the recording to confirm if they did hear the whistling, but they uncover something else. Oh, 
Okay. That. That is terrifying. That's really interesting that they're playing live EVP back and they've received what appears to be some kind of scream that none of them hear at the time. Wow, yeah, that's, that's really impressive. As an investigator, you need to step back. You need to say, right, we'll just say it is a noise until we can analyse it properly. I know when you're in the field, you get excited. You know, you want it to be a scream, and uh, you can't help but... I've done it myself. It sounded to me like a screech. That seems to be a very clear scream. And whatever's making that noise is certainly not happy. And just as MJ is about to wrap up the investigation for the night, it seems the spirits have other ideas. The lights come on in the doll's house. It's up on the thing, but it has to be pressed to come on. It has to be pressed to come yeah. on? Yeah. To me, that's more terrifying than a screech, because that's totally unexpected. What the hell caused that to, to do that? That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I think that's a good note to wrap up on, guys. Definitely. Great night. I mean, is every knock, bump and creak in this place paranormal? No. However, you've got some amazing activity in this location, from the EVPs to spirit box responses to seeing shadow figures, all sorts of things. I mean, you've got some of the holy grails of, of activity in yeah. this location, so you can definitely bank on me being back here. Brilliant. It's amazing. I'll blow the candle out. <laughs> but what do our experts think? There is certainly things that I've seen there to suggest that the location is haunted. Oh my gosh, I thought that just said MJ. But we must ask, is it the location that's haunted or is it the items that have brought something into the location? We want to believe that things hold meaning. You might believe that there is a spirit attached to an object, but is that more about you wanting that, that to be true rather than there actually being a spirit attached to an object? It's not necessarily about ruling out a paranormal explanation, but I think it's important to keep in mind that there are alternative natural explanations. And if you're looking for a paranormal explanation, it's possibly easy to miss the other natural ways that you might explain what's happening. I really do think that there is definitely something there. The hearse with the handle flying up is enough evidence for me to warrant that place haunted. I was quite skeptical when I first arrived at this location and I'm walking away with a completely different perspective. Anyone who is in two minds as to whether or not this place is actually haunted, I challenge you to have a look at it for yourself. Whether it's ghosts, aliens, or other paranormal phenomena, as encounters happen across the globe, evidence will continue to be captured by witnesses and investigators. But will it be enough? to explain the unexplainable.